It's the Orioles on Maslin, and the final week of the regular season continues as the Orioles and the Blue Jays play game two of this three-game set with the Orioles last night having the disappointing end officially eliminated from the race for the wild card. Hi, everybody. It was a very quiet clubhouse after the ball game last night. Uh, it picked up a little bit today, but obviously some very strong feelings in that clubhouse for both the manager, coaches, and players. Tough after you've battled this long and came that close not to finish out the season with games that are going to matter as far as making the playoffs are concerned. Now, there are some things that matter for the Orioles, including a chance at some gold gloves. We thought over the next couple of days we're going to take a look at just who those players are starting at third base. Has there been anybody better defensively at third than Manny Machado? Yes, injured and will not be able to complete the season, but he has played more innings right now than any other third baseman. He is number one in double plays. He's got total chances that are 65 more than any other third baseman. And he's made those kinds of plays all season, causing many around baseball to ooh and ah. So who are the candidates? Well, probably these are the top three. And honestly, not just because he's with the Orioles, but it really is Manny Machado on the total numbers is the one. And then there's everybody else. Doesn't mean he'll win. Evan Longoria's had an outstanding season there, but not the numbers Machado has. And uh, Dominguez has played out Outstandingly well. Matt Dominguez for Houston has some really good numbers and has done a good job. One thing to note the defensive war, the replacement, defensive replacement in the range, that's number one in the majors, not just the American League. The numbers for the other guys are American League numbers. Jim, uh, really hard pressed. In, a, in an honest effort to say there's anybody else who deserves it more than Manny does. Well, I, I can't imagine that. I know if you're a Texas Ranger fan, uh, Beltre, he's, uh, Adrian's been able to win a couple of gold gloves. And, you know, a lot of people think he's, uh, you know, one of the best uh, third basemen ever. But uh, if you watch Manny Machado, and we have that luxury here in Baltimore, not only the arm strength, the range, the uh, just the agility. And, um, you know, I, I played with Brooks Robinson. He won 16 in a row. And, when you go to Brooks and you say, what do you think of Manny Machado? And he said, well, might be maybe even better than I am. I don't know about that, but he's certainly his equal. He's only 21. And, uh, again, he turned this whole defense around when he came up last August. And uh, just, this, is a, this would be a defense, to, a pleasure to play for. Man, the ballots are out. In fact, the voting started today for the Gold Glove Awards. It will be announced at the end of the season. We talked about the emotions of the clubhouse for the Orioles. We'll talk to the skipper about that when we come back. Local BMW Center. 
Two clouds moving in here tonight over the ballpark. It's still a beautiful evening. Take a look at our train game time. Temperature 73 degrees. No breeze at all at the ballpark. Train celebrating its 100th anniversary by offering irresistible financing. It is hard to stop a train. Really hard. Well, for the Jays tonight, Reyes, Kawasaki, Lari will be Lynn Davis and Ghosts, followed by Toll, Goings, and Pilar. For Reyes last night, another good night against the Orioles with a two for four. Yeah, he would end up um, getting the uh, the winning run uh, in extra innings. So healthy, uh, that is Bud Norris. He will uh, start. He hasn't really started all the way. Uh, you got to go back, what, a couple of weeks. Uh, did get the... Uh, the loss, two in the third innings, gave up one run Friday night. He loves his slider, and uh, when he pitches, they score a lot of runs. For, for Bud, I mean, almost six runs a game, so it's a pretty good combination. His last win was uh, in Cleveland, where actually they got him runs early, and then he pitched seven marvelous innings. So good arm, slider, change up occasional, likes to cut fastball, and you know, gives you usually a chance to win, uh, an upgrade in the starting staff for the Orioles. He has never appeared against the Jays, so he's going to take care of that part of his bucket list right here tonight. As he'll make the first start against Toronto, Reyes will be the batter he faces. He has faced Reyes before. Reyes is 5 for 13 against him. Pitches in there for a strike, and we are underway. For the victory last night, Toronto's taken the edge in the season series now. Nine games to eight. And the Orioles looking to get out of a six-game losing streak. John Gibbons Ball Club at 72 and 85 on the year. Last place where they will finish. Some question about for the Orioles, but Showalter's team. That'll be down the line and foul. Right now, the um, Orioles trail the Yankees in the American League East. So it's Boston, Tampa Bay, New York, then Baltimore and Toronto. The Yankees, however, only a game ahead of the Orioles. And the Orioles would much prefer to finish third instead of fourth in the American League East. Reyes, Kawasaki, and Lowry are due up. One ball, two strike count on Reyes. Norris's pitch tapped the other way foul. Yeah, another factor, of course, with 81 wins, you want to win 82. It means you'll win more than you lose. You've got the Jays tonight, tomorrow. You got the early pitching, and then you get the Red Sox coming in, trying to have the best record in the American League, and you're going to see their three best starters, Buckholt, Lester, and Lackey. John Farrell promised that. Pitch will be taken. Did he go? No. Farrell said he's going to line up for the postseason with that final weekend against the Orioles. Red Sox chances of having the best record have improved as Oakland lost today. The Angels beat them, so the Oakland uh, A's 94 wins, 95 for Boston. And that pitch fouled off at the plate. And then uh, the Angels go down to Texas. To the, the, the Rangers uh, trying to get a wild card. Probably two months ago, they would have welcomed having the Angels, but one of the hotter clubs in baseball, trying to get to 500. Always good to win when it doesn't matter. A three ball, two strike out on Reyes, and the delivery will be popped up in the air, third base. Flaherty in fair territory puts it away. Now take a look at the defense, and it's not your normal defense because of uh, Jones had the night off, but McLeod. Pretty Marcakis, a couple of gold glovers out there. Uh, McLeod and Marcakis. Flaherty playing third for Machado or hit the knee. Hardy won a gold glove. Chope, uh, this will be his major league. Uh, Scope uh, will be his uh, major league uh, debut. And then Steve Pierce uh, will be over at first. And then uh, Steve Clevenger behind the plate. There's Jonathan Scope. Okay. Let a curse out. He is uh, one of the Orioles' great prospects. He's 21 years old. Signed as an undrafted uh, free agent. And uh, the Orioles want to take a look at him at second base because that is a position that for next year is a question mark. Whether Brian Roberts would be back or not. Whether Scope, who has played some second this year but not a lot, can assume that position. What Joe Walter said before the game today, you know, it's not a lot of time for us to take a look at him, but at least we'll have an initial feel for him at second base. Pitch is taken by Kawasaki. Two ball, one strike count. There's Brian. He has DH'd and played second since coming back, and the youngster who may very well get a shot at that position for next year. And uh, Bud Norris is in there with a strike. Yeah. Kawasaki two and two. Yeah, he had a, the big bunt last night after that Reyes hit. Lead off single in the eighth inning. He bunted him over. He would score the tying run, and then eventually they would win in extras. Alexi Casilla looks a lot better than he did yesterday. 
Three ball, two strike count. See up. Talking with the skipper. Down to third, fair ball. That's going to go right down the line. Kawasaki, real good speed. He'll make the turn head to second and get in there easily as McLeod will play it back in. So Kawasaki on with a two bagger in his first at bat ever against Norris. Yeah, not much you can do about that. Three and two, you got to throw a strike. He knows you're going to have to throw something over. It's probably going to be hard, and he just slashes it inside the bag. So the first chance with the runner in scoring position. We go to Lowry, who was 0 for 5 in the ball game overall last night, including a couple of chances to pick up an RBI. Brett Lowry batting third, then Lynn right behind him. Scope will hold the runner close at second base, and the check swing. That'll be bounced all the way to the backstop, 0 and 1. The Mets beat Cincinnati today by a score of one to nothing. Obviously, a very important game for the Reds, as the Reds right now are getting very close to being the second wild card team. Right now, it's the Cardinals winning the division. Pirates and Cincinnati is the wild card club. Ball popped back. There'll be no play on that over the screen. Cardinals also won their game against Washington today by a score of four to one. So they're solidifying their spot. They've won three in a row, eight out of the last ten games they've played. They got 94 wins. Pirates with 91 and the Reds with 90. And the pitch bounces. Clevenger able to hold that one to the third base side. And that's important because uh, I mean you look between the Red Sox and the uh, and the Oakland A's. They're vying for the best record in the American League. They both uh, have. Two of the best home records. Atlanta has the most wins at home in the National League, but St. Louis plays great. So, want a minute and win as many as you can. Home field advantage can play, especially when you get deeper into the playoffs. That one will be fouled back upstairs off the fastball from Bud Norris, and the count will stay at a ball and two strikes. One ball, two strike count. And just missed. Norris thought he might have had that one. For Toronto last night, they ended up with a three for 12. A lot of chances scoring wise as the Orioles left 10, Toronto left eight on base in last night's ball game. But of course, went extra innings and was 1 3 2 by Toronto in the 10th. 2 2. And Laurie on a cut on a pitch away, and Norris gets the strikeout. Well, we talked about loving his slider is one of our uh, keys and doesn't get a whole lot better than that. And the interesting thing to me is that's two in a row. The old one he was able to take had a very good take and that one just uh, moved it on the outside part of the plate breaking down and away. Big big strikeout with runner in scoring position. And neither of these teams Gary as you know scoring a lot of runs over the last 20 30 games. It's been a real struggle here in the month of September in particular for both ball clubs offensively. And Lynn will take the pitch down low for a ball. He was taking all the way on that one. Interesting because Norris continues to be among the top four whom hitters go after on the first pitch. It's been that way all year. He throws a lot of first pitch strikes. 30% of the time hitters swing at the first pitch. The only higher rates Justin Verlander, Derek Holland, and Luis Mendoza. One ball, no strikes. Kawasaki at second base. Lynn will take that for a strike. Well, he could throw a lot of strikes. I still uh, I just remember the interview you did after that uh, gate game in late August on the 28th up in Boston where he said he actually tried to throw ball one and did <laughs> because he knew they were waiting to hit the first pitch strike. And I've never heard that philosophy before. And that would be a game where he'd go, Throw 105 pitches in five and a third inning, so he'd get 16 outs, and they didn't hit him hard. You know, it's when he made that great defensive play, did walk four guys, struck out seven. So that's a very kind of usually they say strike one is the most important pitch in baseball, but for Bud, who does hail from the uh, San Francisco and maybe a little more of a free swing thinker than others, 
<laughs> he goes, I'm just not going to. You know, the average is too high. I'm not going to let him hit it. And he didn't. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you won't hear that from many pitchers. No. No. And, <laughs> and I really, I mean, I like him. I like his stuff. He's the athletic guy. I mean, he's really going to help this club down the road. I mean, yeah, he's got to come up with a, a little bit better changeup. But he's a competitor. He's an athlete. He's, you know, he comes out of the National League so he can hit a little bit, feels his position. And Lynn. Lynn kind of came up there with a bat on his shoulders. <laughs> yeah. And he wasn't going to swing and didn't, and he drew the walk. Well, I, maybe he heard your interview. Uh, <laughs> he, he knew that, uh, you know, who are you going to pitch to? Raji Davis, who actually has had a very good September, four home runs, and he will leave the ball club because his uh, wife's going to have the first child tomorrow. But I think it's just a matter of who you want to pitch to there. And, and there is risk involved here, obviously, in first inning. The team's not scoring a lot of runs. But uh, we watched Lynn last night, a couple of singles to left field. And he wants a right hander. Yeah, and the exactly. lefties are hitting 307 off him, and right handers 246. So the pitch will be taken for a ball as Raja Davis had an 0 for 2 in the ball game last night, came on late. Sierra had to come out of the ball game after turning an ankle out there. So Davis is getting a start in right field in the game. Two on, two down. Down to third. That is a fair ball. Long throw. Flaherty in the dirt. And a great pick by Pierce. So picking up where Machado and Davis left off. Flaherty and Pierce provide defense. That's a long throw. That records the out. Two left on base. But a real nice play to end that last inning. He's taking care of him, boys. Had him out there the last couple of days working on it. Here's the starting lineup for the Orioles with Cloud Hardy and Marquegas, Davis Pierce, and Friday. It'll be Clevenger, Scope, and Flaherty. Renate McLeod last night, he had a one for five, including a home run back to back with Roberts. And our scattering report is Mel Rogers, 28 year old right hander. Well, breaking ball pitcher, and he's got a good one. Uh, Run starved. They don't score a lot of runs for him. Right around a little bit below four runs a game. And then uh, again with John Gibbons, a lot of injuries from the pitching staff with uh, Morrow down, Josh Johnson, the chance to pitch. Two and one in September, 154 batting average. Done a nice job for him. And McLeod will take the first pitch for ball. Remember, you see a lot of bullpen work. The 43 total games. And that will be taken down low for a ball. He's walked 43 in 133 innings. Struck out 94 in those numbers. And he gives up a little over a hit in innings. So a lot of people on base in his starts. And that pitch is taken for a strike on the outside corner. McClough comes in with a three game hit streak. Had the one for five, the homer, and an RBI in the ball game last night. Nate with that 260 overall average. And it's the left handers who've done the damage for the most part against Rogers. 
McLeod will take. Good eye, and the count goes to three and one. Well, I'll tell you right now, Chris Gucciano has already missed a couple of sliders right down the middle. That one almost center of the plate, maybe fooled him, but it certainly gives McLeod the good hitters count. And then the questionable one called the ball. So kind of a wandering strike zone early. Lead off and on for the Orioles. So there is the defense. Uh, Pilar goes and Davis, uh, Lowry, Reyes, Goins, and uh, Lind. And then Josh Thole, who Thole usually does the uh, the catching win, R.A. Dickey. You know, comes out of the Mets organization, came over with R.A. Dickey. His expertise catching the knuckleball. J.J. Hardy batting in the number two spot. With all, this will be a night off. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, it's not dancing. Well, I ran into him. I had never met him. I, and uh, I saw him in the, the hallway. He said, there is an art to doing that. And he, he said, you got to try to relax. And it's not always easy. And Hardy will take the pitch for a strike on the outside corner. And then the other thing, Gary, when you're, you're a knuckleball catcher, everybody knows who you are because they see your number and your name running back to the backstop. <laughs> and whether you're good or not, oh, invariably, the ball's going to get by you. Dickey <laughs> over there in the dugout. Part of the big acquisitions in the offseason and uh, just did not pan out for the small club. And you talk to a lot of the folks who are with the team and they say the expectations are just too high. Larry Goins and there's the double play. So Hardy hits into the ground ball double play around the horn and that eliminates that leadoff walk. Yeah, pretty routine right there. Nice little pitch by Rogers. Well, you're right about that. I, I know Buck Martinez, uh, you know, former catcher TV guy said that one of the problems was that if you expected Josh Johnson, who terrific arm when he's healthy, but has trouble staying healthy, or even Brandon Morrow, terrific arm, but trouble staying healthy, to actually be able to be one of your five starters, and that backfired. And it's not like uh, R.A. Dickey didn't have a good year. It just didn't have as good a year as he had when he won the Cy Young Award. Burley, we'll see him tomorrow. I mean, he, he's won 12 games. Dickey, 13. They've given him a lot of innings, but. And then the injury factor. Everybody has it. And Toronto went through it. Yeah. Still, a, still are. All their home run hitters are out of the lineup. And then Nick Marquegas will swing through the fastball. Nick with a one for four in the ball game last night. Rogers. Throwing some heat on the last one. He'll get up there in the mid 90s at 93 94 mile an hour fastball. The Orioles will probably see that often here in the game. That'll be fouled away on a breaking ball. He's had relief appearances against the Orioles, seven relief outings. He's held the Orioles to a 169 ERA. He's worked four and two thirds innings here in this ballpark and is not allowed a run. He has a 1 0 record against the Orioles. This is his second career start. And the other one came on the 14th of this month when he went to six innings, gave up three runs and five hits, non decision in that ballgame. Now, his average fastball is a little over 93. So he can get it up there. We've seen 94 on occasion. And there's 94. Curveball slider, change up. Got a little bit of cutter, doesn't throw it a whole lot. But you can see, and I saw him early in the year when he came out of the bullpen and he does have four pitches. The ones that they have trouble hitting are the curveball and the slider. Fastball a little over 300. One two delivery broke the bat on that one. It'll go to second base. Goings up with it will make the play and that'll do it. So only three faced in the inning. The leadoff walk taken out on the double play. Game two. Jays Orioles no score.
and care first. You think after 100 and whatever games it is, you know who the team was. Support a great cause. Save with the American Art Association's exclusive 50% off ticket offer. It includes tomorrow night's game. Go to Orioles.com slash AHA and you'll get 50% off tickets simply by donating $10 per ticket to the American Heart Association. So it's a great cause. One more chance tomorrow night for half price seats. Again, that's Orioles.com slash AHA. And we go to the second inning. Pitch will be taken down low. Ghosts who had a one for four getting the start in center field again tonight. Yeah, he hit the slicing line drive that made a left turn on Nate McLeod last night. And off the fist will foul that one. Back yeah, he, into the seats. Yeah, Chris Tillman, of course, Tillman uh, pitched well enough to win his 17th. He had three pitches going last night fastball, curveball, changeup, and Anthony kept chasing that high fastball. And he'll put that one up in the air to right field. Nick Marcakis meanders in a few steps and puts it away. Ghost retired, one down, second inning. You can win a hitting lesson with Adam Jones. Join Masson's Touch Em All Rewards for your chance to win the grand prize. Just go to MassonSports.com to sign up. Toll coming to the plate, the catcher. There are the numbers, just a 150 batting average for him. He's had only 107 at bats, 41 games, a homer, seven RBIs, a couple of doubles, and a triple. When the extra base hits, he has faced Norris three for 11 with a home run off the Orioles starter. 1 0 delivery back into the screen. And not a lot of playing time uh, behind JP Arasibia. Early on was Henry Blanco. He said he got a two year deal, and they just thought that uh, Blanco had, had some history with uh, Dickey catching knuckleballs. He could handle it, and then eventually he was called up. And that pitch will be taken. Norris with a two ball one strike count. Goings waiting on deck. Outfield moves in a couple of steps on him shoots the hole. He's got a base hit. So he's on with a single with one away here in the second inning. That'll be hit number two. Off Norris in the ball game. Well, it seems like a it's such a simplistic. Uh, Method of hitting, but you'll you work the count into your favor, and then if you know you're not a home run hitter, you go the other way. So it's not a horrible pitch, just a fastball away, and he hits it right where it was pitched. That's kind of what good hitters do. And gets himself a base hit, and uh, Goings coming to the plate. Brian Goings, a five-game hit streak. He had a one for four to extend it in the ball game last night. Rookie player. And he'll take the pitch outside for a ball. Gary, I met him for the first time, and because he hit that high chopper that went off the glove of Chris Tillman, got the first run, one of the three runs for the Jays last night. But he was still talking about Jim Johnson's sinker. He says, I've never seen anything like that. 96, <laughs> bottom dropped out. <laughs> Hang with him. Yeah, well, that's, that's what he did. Goings has played in uh, 30 games now. 97 at bats on the season. So for both of these ball clubs now for this game and probably for tomorrow too you're going to see a lot of players who are getting some playing time at the end of the year a few call ups. But none by accident there are players that both managers and organizations want to take a look at. You know well, they like Goins because he's a shortstop and they think he's really going to help him defensively and. John Gibbons will tell you what I like about him. He's got a little bit of pop, but he also will hit the ball the other way. And if you're going to hit at this level and you're not a home run hitter, you better use the whole field. Otherwise, they will exploit your weaknesses and you will struggle. 2 1 delivery, runner goes, hit and run on. It's going to work, base hit to left. However, McLeod was so shallow. Thole has to hold up at second. So Goings on with a single. He's got a six game hit streak now. Both base hits going the other way to left field. And uh, Bud Norris, uh, the, the, the old uh, Sparky Anderson 2 1 hit and run count. And he's done that to the last two hitters here in the uh, second inning. Pilar coming to the plate, the number nine hitter. He's playing in left field, had an 0 for 4 in the ballgame last night. 
The Jays will be looking to improve their offense next year and that'll certainly come around a bit just by having people healthy. They are tenth in average and eighth in runs coming into the ball game. Still second in home runs to the Orioles even with all their big bats out of the lineup right now and for much of September. So another chance they got a one out double in the first inning could not move Kawasaki around now they've got two on one down here in the second. And Pilar will take the pitch for a strike going to. Yeah, he's looking back and asking Chris Guccione is was that high enough and yes it was. Kind of helped Bud Norris out swinging at a ball about letter high. Pilar playing in his 32nd game of the year and he goes up. And fouls that one away protecting that high strike zone count will stay at two strikes. Yeah, a little higher than normal. He averages, and it's hard to believe, but he averages almost 19 pitches per inning. And that's high for a guy that has a nice windup. Seems like he can throw a lot of strikes. And I think probably one of the reasons for the high pitch count is the fact that everything's pretty hard. Fastball 90 to 95, and slider at about 85 to 87. Not a lot of off speed pitches. So if you're a hitter, you know you're going to get something hard. You. You might have to have trouble hitting that slider, but it's going to all be between maybe 86 and 90, 93 miles per hour. And that'll be fouled away. Pilar in just his third season of Major League Baseball out of California, out of West Hills, California. Signed uh, in the 32nd round back in the 2011 draft. And it was just his, th this is his third pro season. He's done well offensively. At the minor league level. Now they're trying to find out if he can get that done up here. 0 2 delivery and just got enough of that on a late swing to foul it off. Yeah, he was talking before the game. He said to him, the, the challenge is you come to the big leagues and he has hit at every level. John Gibbons, their skipper, was talking about that yesterday. He says you come to this level and you want to get hits. And then you realize the guy on the mound doesn't want you to get hits. So if you swing at their pitches early on, you have no chance. And a swing and a miss as he got one down low. Norris didn't get a strikeout. Two Ks. Yeah, so but just a little bit off the slider. Really nice pitch. Don't have to throw him a strike because of the count, and he does it. Perfect execution of the major league breaking ball to a young hitter. And a nice block by Steve Clevenger. That's so the way for yeah. three with runners in scoring position early in the ball game for Toronto. And that'll get their best hitter with runners in scoring position to the plate. Reyes in the leadoff spot popped out his first time up and will take the pitch down low. Two away. Runners on at first and second. A couple of singles here in the second inning. And Reyes with the big 381 average. Norris's delivery to him against the Orioles this year. Reyes. Again, has done well hitting 323. That continues his big career average. 368 is his career average against the Orioles. One home run included in that. And he's even better here at Camden Yards where he's hit 452 for his career with a lot of at bats. 2 0 count. Runners with their leads off first and second. Norris will get the pitch in there for a strike. Reyes didn't think so. Turns away. Then it goes to two and one. Yeah, I think again when you get a guy that's hitting uh, this high, at 381. I mean, he's a lifetime 291 hitter. He won a batting title a couple of years ago with the Mets. He took that pitch because it wasn't his kind of pitch, and he knows the count still in his favor even at two and one. That's why veteran guys lead off guys like Jose Reyes. If they're healthy, and again the sprained ankle severely early on kept him out for almost three months. Two-one delivery on the way, and he'll bloop that to left field, and that's going to be a base hit. Dole will come around to score. Runner will have to stop at second, and Reyes an RBI single, and on the board Toronto as they've got the one-nothing lead. He just blooped that one the other way. 
Well, Mark DeRosa, this is what he did last night off of Mattis to tie it up. Just a little looper. And that's all it takes sometimes if that's your approach. Certainly there's a luck involved. Take a pretty good pitch by Bud Norris and turn it into an RBI single. So all these left-handers are taking the ball the other way with these hits to left field. And that will bring a visit to the mound. Bill Castro, the Orioles pitching coach, on his way out with two on and Kawasaki coming to the plate. That's why this lineup has all these left-handers in there against Norris with that almost 50 point differential in batting average favoring the lefties and 16 of the 17 home runs have been hit by left handers and that's why he pitched around the one home run hitter in the first inning Flynn, you know, they're a big guy that's healthy for 23 home runs six of the nine he's facing are hitting from the left side Kawasaki with a double is first time up Three singles in this inning and a run in. Two down. And that'll be there for a strike. Kawasaki hitting uh, 220 on the year with runners in scoring position. One for four for Toronto in that situation. Shattered bat popped up behind the mound. Flaherty will come over and put it away. A run in. Toronto's up one nothing. Ask Buck Showalter today what the feelings are. Everybody's heartbroken, okay? Fans are, everybody. And, um, um, you know, you spend that much time together since February, really, since it seems like forever, um, if you care. And, you know, you're going to have some emotions about it. But most of mine is just feeling bad for our guys because they deserved better. And, uh, you know, but I do find you, I think you seek your level. Yeah, and you realize how finite, how short, how small the difference is between winning and losing games and, um, you know, a, a flare here that finds chalk or your line drive doesn't. Uh, uh, an umpire's call goes one way or the other. I mean, it's it, it makes you realize sometimes how little control you have over it. But if you're consistent, I do think you seek your level. You know, over the course of a long season, you are what you are. And um, we need to keep that in mind. So, Buck Showalter with a... Point to the future there at the end, really keeping that in mind. He's talking about what the changes may need to be for yeah. the Orioles to be better. Chris Davis out there will take the pitch inside. Well, the one, un one, yeah, the one undeniable fact is that their core players are uh, among, and I've said this many times, and you could just see it by watching the player among the best in baseball. So it comes down to your pitching and your secondary players, and you can see a very tired ball club, and a lot of that it is a grind. Yeah, you, you know you. What eight games over 500 on May 10th, and here you are at the end of the year. You're only five games over 500. You've had to grind it out. You, you didn't have a winning month in July, nor August, nor here in September. 
it's been a grind and you got to give them a lot of credit for playing hard. But then Davis on the big cuts gone. So there's a big curveball but a lot of other teams they play the game the same way so you just got to get a little bit better. Been a tough year there's the big swooper. The Red Sox did what you need to do to win. They were a plus 11 on May 1. They were a plus 11 June 1. They were a plus 16 July 1. They were a plus 22 on August 1. They were a plus 26 on September 1. And they're now a plus 32. That's how you build a winning season. You get to 500 and then you keep going in increments over that. And uh, virtually every team that wins, barring the exceptional year where you have some team that makes a dramatic run at the end, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. You get to 500 and you build on it. The Orioles got to a point. Where they just stopped doing that. Ground ball towards short. There's Reyes. Long throw. One hopper. Got him. Perfect one hop for Lynn. So got that done. And Pierce is retired. And there are two down. Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game. Warren Parks from Waldorf. Warren, you've won 500 for being selected. You get 100 more for every Orioles hit during the game and an extra 500 for any Orioles home run in the fifth inning. For the latest info on new games, current promotions, and second chance contests, visit mdlottery.com. And a pitch taken for a strike. So Pridey up playing in center field. Pridey arrived at 4 o'clock this afternoon. 0 1 delivered. They wanted to take a look at him. Decided to give Adam Jones a rest. Adam is missing his first start in 322 games. Got to go back to 2011 since Adam Jones is not in the starting lineup. Played every game last year and every game this year up until tonight. Yeah, Jason had a nice year. Uh, you know, 15 home runs, 57 RBIs, big ballpark, 24 doubles, can run a little bit, five triples. The defensive outfielder got a little bit of pop. Got to love hitting in this ballpark. And the 2 1 delivery on the way to him, and that will be taken inside. Three ball, one strike count. So you can pretty much bet, bet the ranch at Triple A that you're going to get a fastball to hit. Let's see what he gets to hit here. Three and one. Hitters count. And Three again, one deliveries on the inside corner for a strike to him. Man Machado got moved to the 60 day DL to make room for Jason on the Orioles roster. He is 29 years old. Three ball, two strike count. The Friday's ground ball will head to second. Knocked down. Goings makes a nice play and a one, two, three inning. So the run in the second. But up on the boards, the only one up there, Toronto with the lead. Around the ballpark and uh, online. He's at the ballpark today. He talked about that patella tendon tear, one that he suffered similarly in the minors. Kind of same thing a little bit. Um, obviously, uh, this was a little, little more painful, you know, and especially this this stage of the of the year, you know, um, that just made it just worse. 
So Manny is here and the rehab uh, is going to be the conservative approach and just try and work his way back. Yeah, it's a small ligament on the side of the knee that kind of stabilizes the patellar tendon and Dr. Richie Van Sells, the Oriole, longtime Oriole trainer, and he said they'll take a look in a month and that you would still have ample time if it wasn't healing proper to do something so he'd be ready for spring training. So something that could, I mean, certainly anytime you get hurt, it's significant, especially to a guy with that kind of talent, but could have been a lot more severe. Yep. Bud Norris on the mound for the Orioles. A run on four hits off him. The Orioles zeros across so far. Brad Lowry at the plate. Delivery to him will be taken down low. Lowry was a strikeout victim his first time up. Lynn and then Davis to follow. Playoff picture developing obviously on a daily basis here with the That'll start next week with a wild card. That'll miss outside. Texas, their elimination number uh, right now is five. So there's still very much in it. They're playing at Houston. Kansas City's elimination number is two. They're at Seattle. And the Yankees down to just one. Yankees, uh, their elimination number is one. Tampa Bay gets them again. Tampa Bay romped them last night. They're tied tonight's second inning at one apiece. Either a Cleveland win or a Yankee loss, and the Yankees are out. And that's outside, so he walks him a leadoff walk here in the third inning. Second walk surrendered by Norris. The winning fan design t shirt has been announced, and tomorrow, the first 10,000 fans, 15 and over, at the Jays game are going to get the Orioles shaving cream pie t shirt. It was designed by Scott Thompson of Rockville. Get to the ballpark early. Make sure you pick up this unique collector's item, all part of Fan Appreciation Week. 888-848-BIRD or Orioles.com for tickets. Lind drew a walk his first time to the plate. Lind hitting 433 against the Orioles this year. He's got four home runs and 10 RBIs against the O's this season. Runner on at first base and nobody out. And the pitch will be taken for a ball by Adam Lynn. Yeah, I would imagine they'll watch uh, Bud Norris pretty close. You know, the forearm stiffness that kind of goes up into the flexor tendons and then into the elbow. So if the command goes, it be a pretty good indication that maybe it's tightening up. 1 0 -oh count. And that will miss outside. He has wanted nothing to do with Lynn in the first at bat, nor here on the first two pitches. And then what happens when you get that tightness in your forearm and your elbow? It's right when you release the ball, which is usually your location and then your movement. And when it's hurting, you're waiting right as you release it. When you pull down or side spin the ball, and that's, that's when you can feel it. And you can see Billy Castro looking on, or a pitching coach, former major league pitcher. He's watching very closely. Two ball, one strike out. Lynn with Raja Davis waiting on deck. Pretty close play. Yeah, they run a little bit on uh, Bud Norris over the course of, of the season with the Astros and then over here with the Orioles, 15 out of 20. Norris with a two ball one strike count. And the pitch is taken for a strike so a couple in there and evens the count up. For Bud Norris he has not worked in a ball game. As we said against the Jays and he's not started a game at all since September 8. He did work in a relief appearance on the 20th in that 18 game affair and in fact was. Outstanding in relief in that ball game. Runner goes up high. Coverage is throw. And a stolen base. Yeah, that was certainly uh, Larry's ace steal of the uh, of the year. And Lovinger makes a nice throw, quick release, head down, straight steal, snap tag by. And you can see the nice little quick tag by Jonathan, and almost gets spiked. Pantleg. So Larry gets himself into scoring position. Eight out of 13 for him in stealing bases. And a swing and a miss on a pitch down low. Norris gets a big strikeout first out of the inning. 
So now 51 walks, 101 strikeouts for Adam Lind. Nice little breaking ball. And it just tumbles out of the strike zone, and Adam swings right over it. That'll give Davis the RBI chance, the speedster. Will stand in with a runner at second. Infield will play around, playing him to pull. And he'll take the pitch on the inside corner for a strike. Lowry at second base, being held by Jonathan Scope, making his major league debut, the Orioles' second baseman. Doris with the 0 1 delivery, and that ball fouled off the other way into the seats. Yeah, 90 point difference. Uh, uh, Raji Davis against uh, lefties at 322 and came in at 232 against right handers. And the, uh, still the amazing number. And I guess we talked about it last night. John Gibbons, his skipper, said 174 with runners in scoring position. He'll chase. Good count to try to see if he'll do that. Foul uh, that one off. Yeah, that's almost too good a pitch. Davis just the 21 walks, 64 strikeouts, and uh, 320 plus at bats. That ball the other way will curve into the seats. He's got that inside out swing that almost comes naturally to him, so he, he can punch balls the other way in the air on the ground. Obviously, the scouting reports say he'll pull it on the ground. Norris has a discussion with Clevenger, and the count stays at two strikes. We have four home runs in the month of September. Uh, nice little finish to this season, and then don't forget the 45 steals. 0 oh, 2 delivery to him, and that will be outside, not chasing on that one. Here's the one two delivery and Davis will watch it go by. Tough pitch to take in that count but he did and it goes to two balls and two strikes. Yeah just missing but. Yeah the illusion what you'd like to be able to do can't always do it is. Out of your hand you want it to appear to be a strike and then if you're out of the strike zone not be. A, a ball out of your hand and there's another good pitch. And he just kind of punches it and able to foul it off. Go away in sliders. Bud Norris. I mean, the Orioles went three runs or less, seven out of the last 10 games, four runs or less, six straight, 17 out of the last 21 games. You're not getting a lot of runs to work with. Not lately. 2 2 delivery on the way, and that's inside. Good eye by Davis. Count goes full, three and two, runner on at second, and one away. Today was St. Louis Cardinal Baseball Day. Pirates lost to the Cubs four to two. Cincinnati lost their ball game to the White Sox by a score of two to one. Here's a three two delivery on the way and he got him. That pitch that's down low is the one that's striking out these Toronto hitters. Well, another slider and a good one. So Lynn goes down on a slider. You can see a little red dot underneath the strike zone. A lot of pitches to get to it though. 70 pitches now. We're only in the third inning. Uh, looks like it's going to be a short night for Bud Norris, even if he doesn't give up a lot of runs. Two down. Here's Ghost. Fly out to right field. Runner at second. Inside Peter at 93 for a strike. Cardinals can cut their magic uh, number down to one. They've won today, and with Pittsburgh and Cincinnati losing, the Pirates in second place. They've gained a, gained a game on that one. Here's the 0 1 delivery. And that ball is ripped in the end of the gap. Marquegas going over won't get it. It'll roll all the way to the wall. Lowry will walk home. Going to go for a triple ghost on his way, and there'll be no play on him. He gets in well ahead of the throw. An RBI triple with two outs here in the third inning, and the Jays have a 2 0 lead. Yeah, he hit it like a tee shot. Not too many lefties don't like it down and in. Free swinging young hitter, and he gets it 
Not about knee high inside corner and just smokes it. And then it you're with us last night talking about it in the minor leagues 70 steals. I was going to make it to two to nothing easily trotting in as it goes is on his way to third. Ghost gets his fourth triple in 128 at bats. Or his fifth triple. Wow, he's got five at the major league level. He can fly. And a strike taken. Thole had a base hit in the second inning. Came around to score their first run. Reyes got the RBI there. Ghost gets the RBI in this one, and that's going to bloop. That's going to fall in for a base hit. And another RBI with two down. So Thole delivers on another two out hit. And that's how the Jays are scoring in this game, finding two out RBI hits. And a 3 0 lead. Cole gets his eighth RBI of the season. Those are not the kind of pitch counts that you like to have 26, 24, 25, and you're not out of the inning. Wow. I mean, sometimes it's just it's, you, you watch Bud Norris, you go, boy, looks like it's good stuff. And they keep getting hits sometimes. Goings will take the pitch. He has had a single. The only at bat he's had. Six game hit streak for him. Runner on at first base and two down here in the third inning. That's three runs on six hits in the ball game for Toronto. And the pitch is taken for a strike. You know, the other thing that you look at, Gary, and a lot of times if, when you're a veteran pitcher, you're in spring training, you would go to pitch against triple A teams. Most of the youngsters and you're seeing a lot of them with Toronto. They are good fastball hitters. Got him foul tipped into the mitt and held on to. So Norris with five strikeouts in the three innings but a couple of runs in this inning. A couple of hits one left. innings. The O's and the Jays set a new major league record last night. 238th extra inning game this season. The most ever. The D-backs have played 78 extra innings this season. That is a new major league record for an individual team. 21 pitchers were used in that Rays game the other night in the 18 inning ball game. That is a new major league record. And 31 games of 14 innings or more have been played this year. That is just one shy of a record set back in 1976. So a lot of extra inning ball games that have gone deep using a lot of pitches. The Orioles have gone eight and seven in extra inning games. That pitch will be taken low for a ball. Clevenger up. But the Orioles had 18 of them last year. They were they lost the first two then won 16 in a row. And inside to him on a 2 0 count. Ishmael Rogers looking for his sixth win of the season, his second against the Orioles. 
And he'll take the pitch inside and get ahead on the count three and oh. Field pitch taken. And that's going to be there. Yeah, you would think that Clevenger would get a pitch to hit three to nothing. Last thing you want to do, they get you free run lead. He's walked somebody and there's a couple of fastballs that he's taken. Line drive hitter. Clevenger, the 3 2 delivery to him, grounds it to short. Reyes. So here's Jonathan Scope, his major league debut. Here is his first major league at bat. Getting the start at second base in the ballgame. Manny Machado out to watch him. And they are good friends and a nice hand by the Oriole crowd. 21 years old, out of Curacao. Fifth professional season. You see the numbers he put up in the minors this year. And he'll take the first pitch down low for a ball. Yeah, he only had because of the back injury and 289 at bats. And he gets a base hit. First at bat, second pitch seen at the majors, and Jonathan Scope lines it. Man, he's got a big smile on his face for his buddy, and the ball will be collected at the Orioles dugout. Well, that was a rocket. Boy, did he get on top of that high fastball. I mean, here's your 1 0 fastball, and this is the way you like to attack balls in the middle of the plate. I mean, does he square that up? You <laughs> are. <laughs> the scope is on, and the pitch will be taken inside. Toll with a nice stop right there. Brian Flaherty 0 for 3 in the ball game last night batting ninth. There's the baseball. That'll be held on to by Manny. To go on the mantle for scope. And that ball's hit deep. Way back and right. And goodbye home run. Ryan Flaherty gets number 9. 22 and 23rd RBIs. Well, that's the wild factor you get from Ryan Flaherty with his power. Ball is a rocket. So a couple of high fastballs massaged here for two runs for the Orioles. And the Orioles make it a one run ball game. There's not a lot of hang time. And you can see it looks like a two seamer and it's gone outside middle of the plate. Rogers has surrendered 20 home runs, 10 to hitters from each side of the plate. And the Orioles, who had nothing coming into the inning, get the single by Scope, their first hit, followed by Flaherty's home run. And it is a three to two ball game. Ryan Flaherty would like to play Toronto every day. He came in hitting 286 against this ball club with three home runs and five RBIs. So now he's got four homers, six RBIs against Toronto this year. And McLeod will take it for a strike. Two and one to the Orioles leadoff batter who drew a walk his first time up. And eight uh, with a home run last night, number 12. And the two solo home runs. He Orioles hit. Broken bat. Bloop's going to fall in. That'll be a base hit. Nate will make the turn. Head to second. Quick throw. Not in time. A double. So a rookie starts it off. A rule five guy homers and uh, then a veteran. He does a little Josh Thole where he breaks his bat and just finds a little bit of a hole. Right off the end of the bat. Well, maybe the label, I guess, and just dumps it in like a 60 degree wedge, a little backspin. And then easily into second. And that'll bring up J.J. Hardy with a chance to tie the ball game up in a base hit. Only one down. Rogers in the dirt. Goal again after May and has to make the stop on it. Hardy, double play, hit into his first time up. He's gone two for ten. And the times he has faced Rogers. 
Goings holding the runner close at second base, and that's there for a strike. Close to one and one. So the Orioles rattle back and get the fans under the ball game here in the third inning. One one delivery Hardy in the air foul. Among all the Orioles J.J. Hardy is really had by far average wise the best September hitting 303 he's had a couple of home runs in a month that has been so tough for the Orioles. Danny Valencia started out was really hot he's had a good September. But J.J. has continued to the strong finish. One two delivery on the way and a swing and a breaking ball and he missed it. Well, that's the whole, the lowest uh, average the slider and he got himself into account for a single uh, home run on fastballs and then the good slider just slides away from the bat head. Looks like a fastball you think it might have some carry may stay on the same plane and it just dives down and away. So Rogers with his second strike out of the game and here's Nick Marquez. Nick grounded out his first time up one for eight lifetime off Rogers. And foul that one back one to drive right there. And Jonathan scope. That's an exciting entry into the major leagues you lash one to center and the next guy up brings you home on a home run. That'll make you feel good about yourself night number one. <laughs> oh one count. And the off speed delivery locked him up. It's in there 0 and 2. Yeah, you really kind of have to wonder when you look at the Nick Marcakis, the, the broken hand, the hammock bone injury, if it hasn't affected him this year. You know, early start, but just hasn't been able to have the kind of bat speed that we normally see from him. And you wonder if it, you know, probably just trying to play through an injury. Or maybe not as strong because of the of the rehab he had to do in the offseason to get the hand well, and it's your front hand. So when that goes, pretty tough to hit. Oh, two count. Power numbers, of course, have been way down for Nick, and he told us when we had an interview with him a few weeks ago, you know, we're just not happy. I know the production; it's not what I wanted it to be, and. Uh, Says you're just going to have those kind of seasons. Says for all major leaguers, not every year is going to be a continuation of the last one. He just wants, and this one's over, to come back and throttle things back up again. Rogers in the shoes out there with the 0-2 count. Yeah, that is one of the problems with being as consistent as he has. Mm -hmm. I mean, close to look, a couple of ticks under 300 lifetime batting average, double machine. Occasional power, Gold Glove right fielder. He's had a terrific year in the outfield. Maybe his best ever. And a lot of players would give their right arm to hit 269 in a season, which is where Nick is at right now. Ten home runs, 57 RBIs. It's just as Jim says, for him, you base it on past numbers and. He's been better. Yeah, and the other thing I look at, I just look at what kind of bat speed. You know, where are you getting? And I think because he doesn't have it, he's probably swinging a few more pitches out of the zone than you normally see. One, two delivery, another ground ball to second base. Goings has it, makes the play over, and that will retire the side. But the Orioles get right back in it. Orioles did not have a hit till the rookie came up for his first at bat, Jonathan Scope. He got it, and then Flaherty got him in. And the Orioles make it a one run game. 3 2 Jays.
A lot of pitches have been thrown by Bud Norris so far in the ball game, but when need be, he's been able to find that strikeout, and most of them have either been right at the bottom of the strike zone or not in the strike zone at all. He's fooled hitters on these pitches, and as a result, has picked up 5K so far in the game. Yeah, his big strikeout uh, pitch is that slider, and that's pretty much been the case tonight. Maybe a an easier inning, more efficient. Devin Pilar at the plate, fouls it back, strikeout victim his first time up, Reyes. And then Kawasaki as we go to the fourth inning. Three runs on six hits for the Blue Jays, two runs on three hits for the Orioles. Jays have already left five, Orioles have left one. And Bud Norris up to the big pitch count of 80. Here's the 1 1 delivery on the way, and that's going to go to second base. Jonathan Scott gets into it defensively as he makes his first play in the infield. Fan Appreciation Week concludes on Sunday with the final game of the regular season, 135 against the Red Sox. That day, the first 25,000 fans, 15 and over, get the Chris Davis AT&T Fans Choice Bobblehead. Gates open 1130 to accommodate the anticipated early arriving crowds. So get your tickets in advance, 888-848-BIRD, or go to Orioles.com. So again, final game Sunday. Note the gates opening at 1130. Here's Reyes. Reyes has popped out single. He's picked up an RBI. Ghost has the RBI triple. Toll has the RBI single. And Flaherty has a two run homer for the Orioles. One ball, one strike count to Reyes. And the pitch will be taken down low for a ball. Bud Norris this year hitters 281 against him last year 254 when all was said and done. Hit hard but right on the ground. Jonathan Scott makes the play again over to Pierce. Two outs. Pretty smooth. What I liked about Pilar didn't run particularly hard so he just took a couple of throw hops. Made sure he made an accurate throw. Reyes runs the ball out and all of a sudden uh, he gets it there very quickly. In three seasons of the minors for scope at second base, 209 games, 977 fielding percentage. This season, second base, Norfolk, Gulf Coast League, Aberdeen, 57 games, had a 992 fielding percentage. So he's played second for the Orioles for the most part. He can also play at short. He even played the game in the outfield, but he's an infielder. Yeah, he came up with Manny, with Manny playing uh, Manny Machado, playing shortstop, and Jonathan at second base. And you know, you talked to longtime scout Dean Albany, who lives down in Little Italy, and he would go, I want to see two guys in the minor leagues pick it. Yep. Machado at short, and Jonathan Scope at, uh, at second base. 1-1 one, one delivery on the way, and that rattles the cage. Clevenger. Trying to catch up with a fastball and right off the middle of the mast. Now Saki jammed the last time, so have an easy inning. Throw a strike right here, and he did. Down at a ball and two strikes from Norris. Yeah, the one thing that Bud and you know I was talking to R. A. Dickey, and we would mention the fact that last year 20 and six, 273 ERA in the National League. He said, when you come to the American League East and you pitch in this league, it's an awake, it's a wake up call. And uh, so for Bud Norris, I think that's why, you know, spring training next year, it's going to be, okay, can I come up with either a little bit more of a curveball, work on my changeup? Because when you try to go through and wade yourself through these lineups, not an easy task. Orioles are 6-2 and two in the eight starts he's made for them this year. That'll be a base hit into left center field, McClouth over. So Kawasaki's on again, double single in three times to the plate. And again, two down and a runner on for Toronto. Picked up uh, Reyes's RBI came with two down. Both RBIs in the third inning came with two down. Brett Laurie coming to the plate. He reached on a walk, stole second in the third inning, and then would come around to score a run. Laurie 
These two games now one hit in seven at bats. Kawasaki digs back in to get to first base. Got earned with a pretty good lead over there. Not moving, and the pitch will be taken for a strike. This series will wrap up tomorrow night. Miguel Gonzalez, Mark Burley scheduled to go. 6.30 goes extra, 7 o'clock for the ball game. Final game of the season against the Jays. Back comes Kawasaki. Orioles hoping it'll be a chance to win the season series. They've got to win tonight in order to set that match up tomorrow. Yeah, seven out of eight if he chooses to run. That's going to get away. He won't have to. He may get all the way to third base. Scopes over to get it. Long throw to third. They let it go. Not in time. Two base error. Yeah, a little snap throw, but right into the runner. So if you're Steve Pierce, you have to reach across him. Arms not long enough, and uh, here he comes. So the Orioles charge with the error number 49 on the year. That one puts a runner in scoring position at third with two down and an 0 2 count on Lowry. And Lowry can run. Oh, uh, uh, one yeah. almost got away, dude. And one of the problems, and I still remember when John Farrell came, became manager of Toronto before he went to the Red Sox this year. He said this guy can make a ground ball to third base exciting because of his speed. So a lot of pressure on the defense. One two delivery on the way. By the way, the Orioles still very much within uh, the ability to make that all time mark. Fewest errors committed. That number is 65. Fewest errors ever in a season. The Orioles now with 49, including that throw. So, boy, barring some big defensive slump, the Orioles will put together the best in that department ever. 1 2 delivery. Lowry will take it down the line and right. Nick Markakis. Nick's got it. Lowry's retired, and so are the Jays. No runs, one hit, an error, another runner left on in scoring position. Find new roads. Chris Davis is going to be coming to the plate. Extra base hit American League leader. 94. Way ahead of Mike Trout. Miguel Cabrera, Longoria. As Chris pounding out, of course, the major league lead in home runs as well. Yeah, I saw Jim Gentile, who's in town, and uh, I said, what do you think about Chris Davis? He said, and he had 46 for the Orioles. He goes, boy, is he strong. Cut right there as he uh, was a strikeout victim his first time up. Chris would never, uh, wouldn't mind leaving this one out. Chris Davis 
He's now topped the mark in strikeouts, a club record. Mark Reynolds had 196 in 2011. Chris now has 197. So a new mark in K's for the Orioles. Now he's going to be popped up the other way. Shortstop Reyes had the angle on it. Davis is retired. One down here in the fourth inning. When the Orioles win, everyone wins all season long. When the Orioles win and score five or more runs, you get 50% off regular menu price online orders at PapaJohns.com. Just enter promo code Orioles5. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's valid at participating Baltimore area, Papa John's. Steve Pierce getting the start at first base in the ball game with Davis DH. In. Ooh, tagged that one way back left field and goodbye. Tie game. Pierce with the long ball gets the Orioles even at three. Wow, that's what he does when he's healthy. Wrist injuries all year long for Steve, who led the Orioles in home runs in spring training. Well, he jumps all over that hanging slider. It's only his sixth at bat since the 21st of August. So a lot of uh, high fives and fist bumps. You can see a little spinning room service slider. And I, I tell you what, he got out here in a hurry and he hit it on the end of the bat. That's how strong he is. So Steve Pierce, number four in the home run department and his 10th RBI. And the Orioles have tied the ball game up and the pitch will be taken up high. Friday grounded out his first time up. Here's the one one delivery to him. Yeah, got a 3 2 fastball. Actually hit it pretty hard, but Goins was standing right there in the hole. Friday with Major League experience with Minnesota, the Mets, the Phillies. Ground ball up the middle. He's got a base hit. So Friday on with a single with one away, and the Orioles get a potential go ahead run on at first base. Yeah, a lot of people, especially uh, some of my former managers, would get a little bit uh, irritated if you ever threw a. Two strike base hit, but it, it's you'll want to throw it. You just don't want to kind of hang it, and he does. And so the Orioles coming alive here with the bats, they're struggling for a while. Getting Rogers timed up with a runner on. Clevenger will be coming to the plate, and the bullpen begins to move about a little bit. Well, last inning it was fastball. Shope got his major league uh, hit. All right, Luke get at least stretching out there, and then uh, Brian Flaherty uh, belted a fastball. In this inning, it's the breaking balls. Runner goes, ground ball to first, and that will be foul. The Friday taking off, hit and run, run and hit. Clevenger trying to go to that right side. And he's looking at Bobby Dickerson uh, as he's flashing the signs. Orioles third base coach. Clevenger got moved all over the place. There's Bobby down at third. Four minor league stops this year between the Cubs and the Orioles organizations. Another Baltimore chop. Who's going to get the first? Nobody. Oh, safe. Ball dropped anyway, but he would have beaten it out. Well, I don't know what Adam Lynn is thinking about. There is no possible way you're going to have a play at second. And by hesitating and looking at second base on a high chopper, he plays it out into a single. You're right. Here's the Baltimore chop, and oh, just catch it, turn and throw to the front. But he looks at second, and actually the pitcher will beat the second baseman over there. Goins should have been able to take the throw, but uh, Rogers kind of interferes with him. It know. will be a base hit. For Clevenger and the Orioles with runners at first and second now one down. The bullpen is active. Aaron Luke is up in the bullpen and Pete Walker, the pitching coach, out to the mound. So the Orioles, who had been behind, did not have a hit until that third inning when Jonathan Scope got the base hit. He's fired up the engines. The Orioles, the two run homer by Flaherty. 
which, by the way, was a Utah Street shot. He put that out on the Utah Street. Well, it got out really quickly. Now the Orioles got a chance to get the lead back after the homer by Pierce has tied it up here in the fourth inning. There you see the Orioles 0 for 2, 3 for 10 on the other side for the Jays. Scope ground ball back to the mound. Rogers, there's one relay goes, and they turn the double play. So the Orioles will pick up a run on three hits. There'll be one base runner left on, and this ball game is now tied at three. Ball on Masson is brought to you by Antwerp and Toyota. Come to Antwerp and take the yes test today. Visit any Antwerp and dealership and find out if you pass. And by Chevrolet, find new roads. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer here. But Norris, the Orioles starter, out of the ball game. Well, he can really battle them. And uh, again, it, there are some balls hit very softly and uh, they found some holes. But uh, we'll just hope that his arm will be fine. And uh, again, it's going to be a bit part of the uh, Orioles starting rotation. T.J. McFarland, rule five guy. You, you, out of the uh, Cleveland Indian organization, you give him $50,000, has to stay on the roster, and he has. And it just seems like, I mean, you look at the numbers, um, done a nice job. And uh, the more he pitches, the more you get impressed. Sinker baller, a little bit of a slider and a nice little changeup. And. When he's around the knees and gets you to hit the ball on the ground, very, very effective. So TJ McFarland will come on. Norris leaving non decision here in a 3 3 ball game. Lind, Davis, and Ghost will be due up for Toronto. The Orioles have come back to get this ball game tied as we go to the fifth inning. Adam Lind against the left handers hitting just 200 hundred and seven points lower than the other way. So of course he gets a base hit. That'll go off the wall. Nick Marquegas will play it cleanly. First pitch to Lynn and he's on with a single to lead off the fifth inning. Our PNC minor league report brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. For Wada, it looks as though he will not be joining the ball club here in the final week. There you see this season with Norfolk. Well, yeah. They signed him along with Wayne Chen last year, and before he even pitches any games, he has a Tommy John surgery. So, what about 16 months? He's back and pitching very well. His last eight starts. It'll be very interesting to see if he comes back uh, next year. That's going to go to short. Hardy bobbles. Well, that's a base hit. I don't know how they'll score it, but there is no possible way he was going to throw out Raji Davis. How about long at second? Uh, I think in the hole would have been tough. Okay, fair. And it is a base hit. E6. They do get him in there. I'm sorry. Boy, that is a tough play. You just have to assume he's going to be able to backhand it. I mean, again, when you're that good, and JJ Hardy, the gold glover, I guess they expect for him to make that play. 
Second error committed by the Orioles tonight puts runners on at first and second base. Goes who had the RBI triple his last time up against McFarland's bunting or trying and dropped it foul at the plate on the attempt. Ghost says uh, 200 average against lefties, 281 off righties. But he's trying to lay a bunt down at third. Flaherty getting just his second game in here at third base as a starter this year. Trying well, to play that tough angle. Yeah, and he doesn't have to worry about Lynn if he doesn't have a lot of speed at second. But if Ghost makes a good bunt with his speed, be tough to, to be able to throw him out if you're not in a little bit farther. Ghost to me is the ideal candidate for becoming a great drag bunter. If you can, as a left hander, if you, with that speed he's got, if you can place it somewhere between the mound and first base. Well, you would think he'd be able to do it in his sleep because yeah. that would be one of his strengths. The drive defense is crazy. One ball, one strike count, not bunting here, down to first and foul. That reminds me a little of Mickey Rivers. And, you know, he was an impact player, you know, both with the Yankees, the Angels, and the Mick could do that. Plus defender. The guy that you're not seeing is uh, Colby Rasmus who had a very very nice year for him. Great September before he was uh, actually hit in the face underneath the eye by Anthony goes and so he's fine apparently the uh, no vision problems no concussion problems. Thank goodness for that. Yeah. Here's the one two delivery on the way and that'll be inside by McFarland. So McFarland stepping into trouble right away as Lynn went after his first pitch and got the base hit in the air allowing Davis to reach two on and nobody out and goes up infield outfield rather moves in a couple of steps and over towards the left and getting that right field line infield also plays him to pull two ball two strike delivery that'll be in the dirt and a little change up and misses so now all of a sudden you're a couple of guys on nobody out. This is why relieving is so difficult. You come in and you don't really know what's working the best because you haven't had a chance to use all your pitches. First one was whacked off the wall, and then there was an error. And probably the right pitch to throw here is a 3 2 slider, but can you throw it for a strike? You haven't thrown one yet. Three ball, two strike count. Nobody out. Runner's not going. And he got him. So he, he does go down swinging. Yeah, he doesn't go with anything but the. 88 mile per hour sinker with some good late life. Nice little target, hits it. So one of the outs he needs right there. Now with one away, Toll coming up already. A big night for the catcher. He's singled twice, scored a run, and has driven in a run in the ball game. McFarland with one out, looking for the ground ball. And it'll be inside for McFarland against Toronto this year. This is game number five. Seven and two thirds innings. Toronto has scored seven runs on ten hits against him. Three walks, a couple of strikeouts. So I think there might have been a grand slam earlier in the year. Yes. Thrown in there. Missed the Warriors. Yeah. Well, that'll take care of four quick ones. 1 0 count. Runners off first and second base. That's going to go to left field. Here comes McLeod. He'll make the catch. Runners get back. Two down. Yeah, they gets you know the, the, the single on the ground and the little jam shot that fell in front. So he's playing very shallow. It becomes a routine play with his speed. Nice positioning. So now McFarland a chance to get out of this with the first two having reached, but now there are two down. Goings has singled and struck out. Five game hit streak. Ryan Goings and an RBI chance. McFarland delivers to him and a strike on the inside corner. There are the base runners. Lynn had the single, Davis with the error charge, allowing him to reach. They get real good speed on that second runner Davis. Here's the 0 1 delivery to him. That's going to go in the hole in the left field. Lynn will make the turn. They're going to wave him home. Now they hold him up, throw all the way in. He had no chance of scoring on that one. 
And Luis Rivera, the third base coach, he was thinking about Sedium, so you let him go as hard as he can just in case there's a bobble. And then a nice little at bat here by Ryan Goins, a little slider. And this is what John Gibbons, uh, his skipper, likes. But here again, I mean, he gets a good jump. He's kind of putting the brakes on already, but running as hard as he can until he's stopped. So the bases are loaded with two out. Kevin Pilar, who has grounded out and struck out their number nine hitter, playing in left, looking for his first hit of the series, 0 for 6 in the two games. And the pitch is taken away. And there are the base runners Lynn single, Davis error, going single. 3 3 game. And that's going to go to short, and Hardy's right there to haul it in. So no runs on two hits and an error. The bases are left loaded. 3-3. Three, three. And drive of the game. Yeah, this ball get, gets driven. Fast ball. Going to make it three to two. Orioles trailing by one at the time until Pierce hits his home run, but he just smoked it. Brian Flaherty gets his first ever onto Utah Street and his ninth home run of the season. The two RBI shot came in the third inning. Flaherty bats here as we go to the bottom half of the fifth. And Ryan will take the pitch for a strike. Rogers, their starter, a walk and two strikeouts. So there's the pitch count at 62. The 0 1. Our drive of the game brought to you by Lexus of Towson, the Baltimore area's number one Lexus dealer. Come see why they're number one. Lexus of Towson.com. Continues to up his numbers against Toronto. And the pitch will be taken up high. Two ball, one strike count. Two one delivery on the way, and that's going to be there. Now to leave the count up at two and two. Orioles six game losing streak. They look to end here in this ball game tonight. Two two delivery. Like to move up into that third spot in the East. Flaherty is going to move on to first base as he gets the leadoff walk. Second walk, Rogers has surrendered. Time for the fifth inning home run bonus. This inning only. Today's Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game. Gets 500 for any Orioles home run. Warren Parks, you've already won $1,100 today. For all the latest info on new games, current promotions, and second chance contests, go to mdlottery.com. Nate McLeod looking for a bunt at third. Brent Laurie moves in against him. A double and a walk for McLeod so far. 
Uh, typically, uh, if you're a left hand hitter, you're on the mound. You're looking for him to try to hit a ball into right field. Runner goes, hit and run, ground ball, second base. The only play is going to be at first. Goings will make the play. Flaherty will move up, and there's one down. Tune in to the Mid Atlantic Sports Report coming your way tomorrow, 5 to 6 30. Tom Davis, Mel Anton, and Dave Johnson, Phil Wood. They'll have the pregame coverage of the Orioles and Jays game. Batting practice look ins, player sound, scouting reports, and more. Plus, Mel Anton and takes a look at a few players who will be playing in their final games as the season ends and retirement approaches. That's tomorrow at 5 on Massey. J.J. Hardy hit into a double play and is struck out. And Hardy will take the slider outside. Orioles potential go ahead run at second. One away. JJ after his first hit in this ball game, couple of hits last night. Here's the 1 0 delivery to him, and then it'll be fouled off. Yes, foul ball at the plate. And the two hits last night were on slide. One up, one down and away, kind of threw the bat at it and hit it into left field. Cleveland's got a four to one lead on the White Sox as they look to solidify their spot. Second wild card team, Tampa Bay leads the Yankees 3 2 in the fourth. They're the first wild card team. 1 1 delivery on the way, and that's a base hit up the middle. Hit hard, goes. Gets it back in. Runner will stay at third. Yeah, he Arms up. Yeah, he plays really shallow. And I mean, this ball just to I assume it was some kind of hanging breaking ball. And he just smacks it right back up the middle. And you can see Ryan Flaherty a little late break. I'm not sure if he thought somebody was playing behind him and wanted to get through. I don't think he's going to score anyway. Bobby Dickerson wisely holds yeah. him up. Lane Kirby getting the signs from Dickerson along with Hardy. So the Orioles runners at first and third one away and Nick Marcakis is grounded out to second base twice. Pete Walker will make another visit to the mound from the dugout for Toronto. Slowly. Very Walking. slowly. Second time up in the bullpen for Aaron Luke. I mean, I say you would imagine it would not take him on a really nice night long to get loose. 71 thrown by Ismail Rogers in the ball game. This is uh, situational and time for the pen. Well, you got back to back lefties with uh, Chris Davis on deck, so that'll give Rogers a chance to try to get out of the inning and or get an out. And then uh, maybe match up lefty versus lefty. Nick Marcagas, 242, runners in scoring position this year, one down. Hardy back to the bag. Well, there's an inexperienced major league pitcher. But JD doesn't run a whole lot. It's just like circumstances. Hey, I'm going to keep him close, even though he's already close. It's any closer. He'll be playing first. Yeah, John Gibbons coming back next year. Former catcher. Still a little bit winded from last night when he had to go out the right field. He says, "Why does the manager have to go all the way out on injuries? We have a trainer." That's right. He's <laughs> right. He's made a great point. One down, and the delivery will be taken down low for a ball. Oh, there's a good take by Nick. And you said last night John gets out there. What he's going to do? He's going to say, "Oh, I yeah, he already knows he's not good." Right. That, that was his point. He turns around, comes back. <laughs> One zero -oh count. Runners on at first and third. Oh, I told him to Marlo Hale, the bench coach with the Orioles last year, came walking by, and I go, "That's your job. You go out. <laughs> you there. get out there." This is Demarlo. <laughs> You go out there and John's going to be thinking of things. <laughs> he doesn't want to be running all the way out to right center field. Third throw with Hardy at first base. Wow.
Runner goes, hit and run, fouled away. Marquegas protecting, so he reached out over the plate as the Orioles try and stay out of that ground ball double play. Marquegas is grounded into 14 double plays this season. Machado and uh, Jones lead the Orioles in that department at 15. 1 1 delivery to him. Nick, the slow roller. Again, a pitch that was away. And a one ball, two strike count. Flaherty, the lead runner at third base. There's Hardy over at first, only one away. Rogers really slowing it down here against Nick Marquecas as Davis waits on deck. See if Hardy goes again. One, two, not running. Pitch will be oh. up high and almost got away. Well, it's almost like he crossed him up. Obviously he didn't or he'd be out to the mound, but he caught it like the ball was going by him. I mean, it's on it. That ball almost gets right by him. Again, we talked earlier. He's usually catching a knuckleballer. Saw John Gibbons whistling to him over there to get his attention to catch her. And they're going to go out to the mound again. Marquegas waiting on the 2 2. Broken back ground ball. And it's a base hit into right field, and the Orioles get the lead. Nick Marquegas, a shattered bat. Flaherty will score. Over to third goes Hardy, and the Orioles are on top, 4 to 3. Now he does make a good pitch. Goins uh, playing towards second base because of the double play in order and therefore he's got to go a long way. You can see him diving into our picture frame right here former shortstop and when you make the dive hard to get the club exactly where you want. Here comes John Gibbons ambling. That's what you do when you're from Texas. You amble to the mound and uh, he's going to take the Rogers out. Wouldn't matter where John was from. He'd still be ambling. ambling. <laughs> Starter out. Yeah, so he struggles a little bit. I mean, through everything and didn't really walk a lot of people, but a lot of his hitters counts, a lot of extended at bats. And 
We have not a whole lot of pitches, but uh, the Orioles uh, not scoring a lot of runs. They do it tonight with four, and Aaron Loop comes on. So uh, pretty good against lefties. There is the total number on the year, I mean, 233 ERA. So two and a third runs over the last 50 games. Lefties 196. It doesn't really. Uh, I guess it doesn't really apply to Chris Davis, who's two for five lifetime off him. But this is one of those matchup things. And, Orioles certainly fly ball gets a run. He's looking for a strikeout, of course. Only one away, and he flails at the sidearm delivery from way over on the first base side. Chris hitting 234 off the lefties and 317 off right handers. The Chris, much of September, has been a home run or nothing. He's hitting 207, does have five long balls. Stays in, drives it to center field. Going back is Ghost. Way back, way back. It'll hit at the 410 mark, go up and over, and it's a ground rule double. RBI, Hardy will score. Marikakis will have to stop at third. Davis a double. And gives the Orioles a two run lead. Yeah, the uh, home run, the 52nd home run down in uh, Tampa Bay was a high breaking ball off of Chris Archer. Check out this hanging breaking ball in the middle of the plate speeds up the bat. This one uh, hangs a little bit so he stays right behind it and boy that's in the danger zone when he does that. Made it a long way for a ground rule double. So the Orioles. Two runs in the inning giving them the two run lead first base open Pierce who delivered a home run in the fourth inning will draw the intentional pass from Luke. Run will be charged to Rogers. He's also responsible for Marquegas at third base. And Friday will be coming up with the bases loaded. For Chris Davis in the RBI department now, he's again tied Miguel Cabrera. They are tied for the league lead with 137, and it's between the two of them. Adam Jones is third with 106. Chris is going to win the home run crowd. He's a uh, crown. He's got 52. Cabrera at 44. But Cabrera, his chance for a second Triple Crown Award is not going to happen because of the home runs. And maybe even in the RBI department. So the base is loaded. Orioles having a big fifth inning. Friday coming up, he delivered a single, and he is grounded out. Mark Agus, a single on at third. Davis, the double at second. Intentional walk, Pierce at first base. Friday before this season in the major league level he had 121 games of major league service sidearm delivery and a swing and a miss over that time a 230 major league hitter 276 minor league totals he's had uh, five major league home runs. The delivery to him, and it'll be left. Wow. Foul into the seats. There's some people applauding, so somebody either got out of the way or had brought their glove. That is a screamer. So, Luke looking for a strikeout. Had out a double A last year to the big leagues. And he's primarily been a reliever his whole career, minor league, big league. And Jason trying to make contact. 0-2 delivery. Pratty will ground that one down to first base. It may stay fair. It does. Tag will be put on. It's an RBI. Scoring is Marikakis. And the Orioles have a 6-3 lead. Well, there goes the four-run mark. As they, they go zooming by that. 17 out of last 21. Four runs or less. They're up to six. Nice little at bat. Certainly didn't hit it hard, but he kept it in play. Did not strike out. So the Orioles came into the inning tied. Three RBIs, Marquecas, Davis, and Pridey. Now two in scoring position. Levenger will take the pitch outside for a ball. Ishmael Rogers will be charged with all six of the runs. Yeah, they're, uh, eight hits. They're their two run third inning started with a walk. This one started with a walk to Ryan Flaherty. Home run had a lot to do with that. 1-0 count. And inside. 
to the Orioles against Rogers hit a pitcher who came in red hot. Rogers had a disastrous August with a 7.66 ERA. It turned it around in September. Came in with a 2.01 ERA and hitters are only 154 batting average against him this month. That pitch is going to be there for a strike. Loop almost ends up playing first base on that delivery. Boy, he comes a long way over. He's uh, six feet, listed at uh, a little bit over 200 pounds. Just imagine if he was six three, six four, stepping almost into the Oriole dugout. Lavenger will get it off the hand of the left field. Pilar is there and will put it away. But a big three run inning for the Orioles here in the fifth. And now the O's are up here in game two of this series by three. Yards tonight. And Gary Thorne along with Jim Palmer and uh, talking about the potential starters. Uh, Norris's opportunity, you think, for next season? What's he got to do? Oh, I think he's got to come up with a changeup. Uh, you know, he's got good stuff, and I'd look at him. I go, this guy's got to be better than he has been. Not that he's been bad. I mean, he battles you. He's athletic. He does a lot of things uh, right for you. But he's got to be able to slow the, the bat down, and that's what spring training's for. You know, have a nice off season, get the forearm well. But it's kind of Oriole baseball tonight. They're yeah. down by three. They always score runs for uh, Bud Norris. Their average only six. Well, all of a sudden you get the two-run home run onto Utah Street by Flaherty. You get the Pierce home run, who we know hits home runs when he's healthy. He's had a tough year with wrist injuries, and then you get the three runs here in the fifth inning. So all of a sudden, doubles and home runs—something you've been waiting for the Orioles to do all September. Lions and Tigers and Bears. Oh, oh, he, ha, ha. <laughs> oh. Uh, they're putting them on here tonight, yeah. and the Oriole bats have come alive and. Uh, a bit ironic it would be Jonathan Scope who had started out the Orioles did not have a hit till he came up in the uh, third inning for his first major league at bat got that base hit and since then Orioles offense has just taken off and it wasn't a softy it was a bullet into center field. DJ McFarland the benefactor of the runs now becomes the pitcher of record for the Orioles as he worked his way out of a jam in that fifth inning when the first two reached and nobody scored. So McFarland working here in the sixth inning. Reyes at the top of the order, a 2 0 delivery to him, and Reyes will take it outside for a ball. Yeah, he was not particularly sharp, and I'm sure the Orioles think there's already action up in their bullpen. I mean, they're certainly aware of that. Want to win it because if you win tonight, that'll be your 82nd win. Guarantees you'll be over 500. There's a ball right on the borderline pitch on the corner, but. Single, couple of singles. There was an error, and then the vicious line drive to Pilar hit right at Hardy to get out of the inning. So it wasn't one of those one, two, three, three, one, and a strike on the outside corner. But you can see all Ray, Jose Reyes, Reyes doing what leadoff hitters do, and that's trying to get on. I think he thinks this ball is outside, and it was. Reyes, 253 right, 308 left-handed, and a chopper. Bounces up and hits him in the batter's box. It's foul. Count will stay at three balls and two strikes. Stinson in the bullpen for the Orioles. Boy, did he have a nice road trip. 
out of the bullpen. Raybeck. Kyle Drabeck for the Jays. Here's the 3 2 delivery on the way, and he's on. He looked back a couple of times to make sure. That's a leadoff walk here in the sixth inning. Time for our AT&T Mobility Trivia Fact this season. 28 pitchers with 200 plus innings from 1962 to 80. There's been at least one pitcher with 300 plus innings, none since. Pretty amazing. I didn't realize it's been that long a period of time. Yeah, game has changed. Uh, Chris Tillman, uh, but he's up to 201, I think, in the third innings. So that's the first time he's been able to do that. And not only do it, but do it so effectively. The uh, Toronto hitters were talking about Chris's performance. And they were saying even better than they ended up beating him up in uh, Toronto, but last night, just the one and run. Nine strikeouts, only one walk. Now a question whether McFarland uh, has a little problem going here as Castro will come out. Levenger came out to talk to him too. Well, he's a finesse pitcher in the sense that he has to keep the ball down, and you know, the first pitch he throws to, to, to Lynn is a bullet off the wall because he got it up. And Goins gets a ball up. Little slider and hits it in left field, and then luckily it gets out of the inning. So they are well aware. Doesn't mean he can't throw a double play ball because that's what he does. I mean, he throws the ball on the ground when he's on his game, but scuffling a little bit tonight. Kawasaki with a 1 0 count. Flaherty in at third, no bunch shown, and a strike is taken. Kawasaki 0 for 5 in his career against DJ McFarland. A 6 3 lead. Each team's put nine hits up on the board. 1 1 delivery on the way and a quick cut. Foul tipped into the mitt. Yeah, he's he's a slasher. Against the Orioles, let's see, he's got the, uh, he got a home run. That was off Tommy Hunter. Cutter, which is up in Toronto. Game winner against Jim Johnson in Toronto. Both in the same series. Earlier in the season. Runner goes, one two delivery, slow roller. Only play at first. McFarlane up to hustle it, can't pick it up. Runner goes to third. Good base running by Reyes. He was watching the play in front of him, and when McFarland bobbled, he just kept right on going. No, well, that's what he brings, and uh, the horrific uh, ankle injury early on started out like a house of fire. Jose Reyes, and then got hurt in game number 11. So what this ball goes about 30 feet lead off walk and then heads up base running easily not even a throw. So there will be a base hit credited to Kawasaki on it T.J. McFarland's coming out of the ball game runners on it first and third here in the sixth inning with nobody out Orioles up.
Yeah, and only uh, one of those to start, actually, a game against Toronto where uh, it's hard to say. You, you throw four home runs in a game and he didn't pitch well, but the only runs he gave up were on the home run ball. And those are the only home runs he threw all year long. So you can see lefty's only hitting 053. Our Bloomberg uh, numbers tell you, I mean, the fastball out of the bullpen, uh, almost unhittable. Nice mix of sliders, and then he'll throw occasional curveball and changeup. So he's got four pitches, which is why he uh, is comfortable starting. And uh, again, I didn't realize that he could throw as hard as he could. And so that's a nice little number there. So the, yeah. Josh Denson first and third. Nobody out. And the pitch will be taken for a strike. Brett Laurie at the plate. He has walked, scored. 0 for 2 in the ball game and 0 for 7 in the first two games of the series. Well, this is all about big inning control right here. So even if you have to give up a run, with Reyes at third and runner at first with nobody out. Ooh, oh. hitting. No way to get out of the way of that one. And they are loaded. Well, he dives, but this isn't about Brett Lowry trying to cover the outside corner. Sixth time he's hit this year. This ball just has uh, no place to go but right in the ribs. So that's the last thing you wanted to do with Lynn coming to the plate. So Lynn will stand in with the bases loaded, nobody out. The Orioles picking up three runs in the last half inning to get the lead, and now Toronto threatening to come back and score in their half of the sixth. Three grand slams you see in his career with the bases loaded. Stenson's delivery to him and a swing and a miss and a pitch almost in the dirt skimming across the top of the plate. Orioles will play their double play depth with nobody out. A lot of people on the field right now. <laughs> And land a slow roller. Flaherty, there's one. Jonathan Scott, they turn two. A run will score as Reyes crosses. It'll make it a 6 4 ball game, but there are now two down. Oh, nice little pitch right there. We saw Lynn uh, hit a couple balls in the left field for base hits. This fastball has late run on it, so couldn't quite center it. And then uh, Flaherty, uh, Ryan does a nice job. Anywhere he plays, he's good defender. Nice little. Five to four to three double play two outs. Kawasaki moves over to third base. And uh, Raja Davis will stand in. Grounded out struck out reached on an error. And will take it inside for a ball. So exactly what the Orioles had hoped for. They get off the bat of Lind able to pick up that double play. Now try to end it right here and not allow any more to score. 1 0 delivery and last out on the pitch away 1 0 1. Yeah, if you can live on the outside corner at 93, and I mean the outside corner, plate 17 inches wide, take the uh, diameter of the baseball, you can add another couple of inches so the plate can get to 21. And, and there's a nice right yeah. yeah. One ball, two strike count from Josh Stenson. Well, the reason you try to pitch low and away, and he did the pitch before this at 93. Is to set up this slider. Does the slider the good one? And he does have a good slider. Looks exactly like your fastball. And then it just moves down, depending on your height, what your arm angle is. And a swing and a miss. He got him. Well, Davis retired. Only one run will be scored, and the bases were loaded with nobody out. It is a 6 4 ball game.
when Ryan Flaherty hits his ninth home run onto Utah Street. Three to two, now three to three. Steve Pierce, sixth at bat since uh, the end of August because of wrist problems. And then right here, three run inning, a little roller into right field. Goins can't catch it off the bat of Marquecas. And then uh, Chris Davis, the double, drives in the fifth run. Cardinals will add another run to make it six to three. Rogers goes four in the third. Norris uh, goes four innings, so neither of the uh, of the pitchers in the ball game as we speak. And Kyle Drabeck coming on to uh, pitch for the Jays. Uh, Geico saving people money on more than just car insurance. Kyle Drabeck going through Tommy John surgery, making his way back to the major leagues this season pitched at about every level in his rehab all the way from Dunedin up to New Hampshire and then Triple A Buffalo came on against Minnesota the seventh of this month first game he would pitched since June of 2012. Drayback had been uh, and still is promising young pitcher 25 years old the Jays had hoped he was going to be one of the centerpiece starters for this team. 1 0 delivery and the pitch is taken for a strike. Jonathan Scope up. The rookie getting a hit. Second pitch seen. First time at bat. Congratulations coming his way from the Norfolk Tides. And all his teammates and the management and coaches there. Yeah, Drayback, who made his major league debut, did that game back on the uh, 15th of September back in 2010. And what a, it was a lot of wow factor. Ball hit deep to center field as he done it way back at the wall. Norfolk stand up. Goodbye, home run. In his first major league game and his third major league at bat, Jonathan Scopes got a homer. Well, he's certainly well rested and played all month and hit like it. This ball is absolutely crushed. Talk about a big time major league debut home run. That was deep to center up into the seat. I mean, this is pretty much like the single up the middle, except he backspins it. And it doesn't come down for a long, long time. So, Jonathan Scope making an impressive entry. Why do I think he probably is not going to sleep tonight? There's the baseball. The gentleman right there in the green shirt's got it, and he'll probably get that back to Jonathan for a souvenir. One ball, one strike count. And the pitch will be taken away, so Drayback greeted with a home run. First batter he faces. Scope had nine homers. 289 plate appearances while playing second and short for the Tides this season. And the pitch will be taken up high. Delivers one in his first at bat here. And the Curacao young man doing the kind of things that it may be only a game or two, but they are remembered. 3 1 delivery, and Flaherty will file it off. Ryan's had a big night. He got a home run third inning out on the Utah Street. Good for. Two RBIs and drew a walk, scored in the fifth inning. Three ball, two strike count. The Orioles 7 4 over Toronto, bottom of the sixth inning. Graybeck's delivery, and that's down low, and he walked it. So the first two on against Graybeck. On Friday, help paint the pike orange on the final weekend of the regular season begins with fireworks night on Friday. There'll be a beautiful postgame fireworks display. Red Sox are in town, 705 game. Save on tickets, get them in advance. 888 848 Bird or go to Orioles.com. <laughs> Nate McLeod, runner on at first base. He has doubled. Drawn a walk and drowned it out. Yeah, when we saw Drayback coming up, and he's had a couple of Tommy John surgeries. I mean, he threw 95, 96, good sinker, four seamer, big curveball, great changeup. A major debut. He would uh, lose four to one, but he'd only give up three runs. Pitched well. Didn't get him a lot of support, but and then a uh, 
series of arm problems. Clarity off first base. 1 0 delivery on the way to McLeod. Oh, that hit Brayback in the leg. Play will be made at first on a 1 3 put out by Lynn. Bigger question is Drayback all right? Well, that's a pretty solid shot. I mean, just a BB. I'm not sure if it got the right or the left leg, but maybe the right calf. And then a nice play by Lynn. He'll come in and catch this deflection and then tag McLeod as he's going by. You can see John Gibbons really said, "Come on, you know this isn't a game that's going to decide anything." So let's well, not you, leave yeah, you in. know he doesn't want to leave, and you can go back in the annals of baseball history of guys that have favored legs and hurt their arms after two uh, Tommy John surgeries. Uh, you are going to be uh, better safe than sorry. The drawback works only a third of an inning. He'll be charged with the uh, home run and the runner on his responsibility Orioles up seven to four. Coming out of the ball game, Jeffries will get as much time as he needs to warm up. The Orioles have the 7-4 lead. And on our Wired Wednesday, we had a chance to talk to the, the skipper Buck Showalter before the ball game as he looks now ahead. I asked him, what are the biggest decisions, in your opinion, the Orioles have to make for next year? I think that um, we got to continue to do the things we do well, and we could talk about that. But we also, um, we got to pitch better, Gary. And... Um, to think you're going to get that through a free agency or a bunch of trades, you're going to end up robbing from Peter to pay Paul. So from my perspective, what I do for this organization, I'm going to try to make what we have better. So they'll be looking uh, throughout the organization, and you hope that some of the injuries that kept people out of games, you got some people around here who have certainly got a chance to be great starters. Uh, well, we've said, yeah, we've said that for a number of years, and uh, to me, it's very frustrating as a former pitcher who came up like a lot of these younger guys, and you know that Arietta couldn't coach him up, and he's now a Cub because he had a power arm. But you know, part of that is his responsibility. Certainly, Zach Britton talked to him today. What are you going to do this winter? Brian Mattis was a, you know your former number one draft, draft choice. So all of a sudden, you're just kind of looking at guys that uh, you would like to see better. Miguel Gonzalez, Tillman has really stepped up. I mean that's I don't I mean I don't think it's a surprise after the way he pitched last year but Gary you know as well as I do you're going to have a an ongoing career you have to build on what you did yep. and he's been able to do that nine and three to 16 wins easily Scotty McGregor kind of walked by today and he said any run support for Chris Tillman probably would have been a 20 game winner this year. Way and Chen has had his struggles here in the second half not sure about that certainly. Uh, Kevin Gosman's got an opportunity to be an outstanding starter. He'll get the opportunity to next year. 
and you got to pitch to win. We've called it our shilling stat as we gone along because Kurt once said, talked about if you want to know what the standings are, go back and see how many starts you got from your projected starters at the beginning of the season. Well, here's what it looks like right now. From the projected starters, the number of starts they've made, Tigers are right at the top. Then you got the Yankees, who are still in a race. I mean, they're not going to get to the wild card, but they've stayed in it. The Royals probably going to go. The Red Sox have got the best record in the league, and the Rays are going to go. So there's not really an anomaly in there. And you take a look at what happens when you don't get the starts. The Astros, the worst team in baseball. Now, the Rangers are the anomaly in this, in that they, while they're at the bottom in that regard, have a real chance at going to the postseason. Then you have the Twins, the White Sox, and Jays, all who've lost a ton of ball games this season. But they've really struggled in September because of the lack of starting pitching. Holland's 9 and 9. Colby Lewis hasn't pitched. Matt Harrison missed the whole year with a bad back, so they've had their problems. You know, I mean, Buck's right on. You just have to get the guys you have. Maybe you acquire a pitcher or two, if possible. And but you need to get a little bit better. And they've done that in the months of September. You know, no doubt about that. Pitch will be taken outside. So we saw yeah. Jeffers. Yeah, we saw him uh, first time last year in Kansas City, and then uh, traded over here in the off season. So there's the numbers. I mean, not a lot of innings. You can see just like last year. Uh, you know, power arm, ball moves all over the place, can throw from the mid 90s. And the delivery will be taken for a strike. 26 years old, out of South Boston, Virginia, pitching with Kansas City and Milwaukee at the major league level prior to this season. Runner on at second base, Hardy a single, run scored one for three. Orioles up seven to four. They've added a run here in the sixth, charged to Drayback. And Hardy on a check swing on a bouncer. Did he go? And the answer is no at first. Yeah, that's, Davis. that's the power curveball. And actually had seven saves with a 165 ERA, a triple A. And well, certainly didn't break the wrist. Bat travel about 50 50, maybe 48 52. Uh, he gets the call. Certainly like to add as many runs as you can. Two ball, one strike count. Hardy to be followed by Marquez. Only one away. Jeffers with a delivery, and that's going to be outside. So he falls behind. Three balls and one strike. With only one away. The Orioles now seven runs on ten hits. The Jays four runs on ten hits. Jays have left ten on base in this game. The Orioles have left only four. 3-1 delivery on the way and a strike in the outside corner. And the other point of what Buck Schoeller was talking about that you need to remember. He talked about maintaining what we've done this year. Can you really expect the Orioles to score as many runs hit as many home runs this year next year as they did this year. Yeah I think they can. Well, I don't know if Chris Davis is going to hit 52. But I think other guys can be a little bit better. That's a topper that's going to go foul. I mean, I look at Matt Wieters. He's having another good year. I mean, how many catchers hit 20 home runs? But he can be certainly be a better hitter hitting left-handed, and he has in the past. You know, his better numbers are really when you look at collectively right-handed. Adam Jones is doing exactly what he normally does. What 32 home runs last year, 31. Hardy 30 home runs, 22 this year, 25. Nick, Nick Marquez is certainly a guy that it's not only home runs, but it's doubles and. Driving in more runs, so I don't think they can. Well, probably not. Maybe home runs. I just think they could score yeah. runs in different ways. Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly right. Goes to second base. Going to there. He'll make the play. The one big thing to me that continues to stick out is the fact they've either been last or next to last in walks. You've got to up that on base percentage. I think as a as a way to kind of compensate maybe for the the home runs that may be down a little bit. And can you really hit that many doubles again? Maybe you can. I mean, that's what they're going to try and do. But boy, it sure would help if you could increase the on base percentage, make those hits more Un run worthy. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a line I'm I not mean, exactly the, conducive. Yeah, the uh, the the the, uh, the late Mike Flanagan used to always say when he became general manager, Flanagan would go, "Yeah, we really got to work on that on base percentage." Every general manager that's come in here, Andy McPhail, has said the same thing. And fouled off. 
Yep, that's a tough one. It's not a lineup of players who want to do that. You get guys who want to hack, and that's resulted in a tremendous offense. In the bullpen, Troy Patton down to third base. Flaherty, there are two down. Marquegas, RBI base hit, fifth inning. Grounded out twice to second. 0 1 count, two away. And fouls that one off the other way. Well, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I, I mean, I still think this team, when, when you're getting into an era where everybody puts these shifts on, everybody on the ball club has to be able to bunt. They have to, and I don't mean, you know, bunt like Del Unzer or some of the great Rod Carew. I'm just laying a bunt down. When they put the shift on and nobody plays on the left side, and you need base runners at the appropriate time, and do it in spring training where you make a competition out of it. Yep. All right. O2 delivery and jammed and fouled off. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it is about keeping it honest. If you can do that, you open up more holes for yourself. The likes of a Nate McLeod can certainly take advantage of that. And we've seen Nick Marquez attempt to do it. It's just that. And I played for Cal Senior, and he said, "Hey, it's perfect practice. You really have to practice what you're going to attempt to do." And it's not really a negative thing on on Nick because when you're hitting 45 to 50 doubles, which is a normal year for him, you don't think about doing that. But now all of a sudden, with all the shifts, I think you have to do that. And we saw Tampa Bay do it in the last series down in Tampa. 0-2 delivery on the way, and that's going to be taken down low. And a one ball, two strike count. You saw, you saw Jennings push the ball down the, the first base line. You had uh, who hit the home run, the 10 pitch home run on Monday, and then all of a sudden Bunning later in the ball game. So just the little things to try to make yourself a, a little bit more rounded offensively. One and two, the count. Flaherty's on at third base, two down. Orioles trying to add another. They've got one in here in the sixth on the homer. By Jonathan Skilp. Down to third again. Foul. Boy, there are some balls just ripped over there beyond that Toronto dugout tonight. Well, what they must like about Jeffress is that when he can throw strikes, and he did it down at AAA, is not only the velocity, but the late movement. So he throws a ball for the outside third of the plate, and because it's 96, which is hard to get the bat head out in front, and it's running all over the place. And right here, when you can, I mean, if the guy's that late on your fastball, if you throw him a breaking ball, you just bounce it. Bounce it down and in. One, two delivery, and the missed inside. And he just goes to another level of 97. Two ball, two strike count on Nick Marquegas. I wonder how much cash they gave uh, Kansas City. Four billion dollars. <laughs> oh, maybe not. Maybe not that much. <laughs> Two ball, two strike down. I knew I shouldn't have asked. No, you shouldn't have asked. No, 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 no. And that one's tap foul, and it is foul. We've seen catchers this year more than I can ever remember jumping on those balls that are hit at home plate, and appropriately so. We've seen Matt do it all year. Matt Weeders has, has gotten three or four outs on those balls that look like they're foul, but they roll out in front of home plate. They don't hit the batter in the batter's box. Picked up, tagged the guy out. And there's Aaron Sevia. The catchers have become uh, very conscious of that, I think, this season. Just not letting that ball roll away. The 2 2 delivery on the eighth pitch of the at bat pitcher wins. Jeffress gets the strikeout, but for Jonathan Scope, a big inning and another baseball to go on the mantle. He got a single earlier in the ballgame for his first major league hit. He gets a homer here in the sixth inning for his first major league home run. And the Orioles have. A seven to four lead.
finale of this series. Miguel Gonzalez on the mound against Mike Burley. Our coverage on Masson HD 630 O's Extra presented by Geico. Our game coverage at 7. All the access you need right here on Masson. So there they are. Mark Burley, uh, John Gibbons talking about it. He's given them exactly what they want. A lot of innings. Slow start, but again, for what, about the 12th straight year, over 10 wins, 12-9 and nine record. Miguel Gonzalez, more wins than last year, wants to give them a good finish. So you can see certainly two capable starters, uh, Miguel a right-hander and uh, Mark Burley the, uh, the lefty. So the Orioles... Have Troy Patton coming out of the bullpen, the left-hander. Stinson worked an inning, had a strikeout. You know, talk about try to improve yourself. The one thing I think Troy has to do a little bit better, if you look at his uh, numbers, is look at this. Lefties hitting better than righties with more home runs. So, again, only Brian Mattis, your, your really lefty matchup guy, with a batting average left-hander is under 200 out of the Oriole bullpen. And we go to the seventh inning. Anthony Ghost will lead it off for the Jays. He has had a triple, picked up an RBI, one for three in the ball game. A couple of hits and seven at bats in the first two games of the series. 0-1 pitch by Patton will be inside. Looks like there won't be any 20-game winner in the National League this year. Jordan Zimmerman tried today, took the loss for the Nationals. Four runs, six hits over seven. 19 wins. 19 and nine. Of, yeah. Yeah. 19 and nine. Wainwright with 18 wins. Yeah, there's a good slider. Yeah. yeah. Wainwright looked like he was going to get there and then he's not been able to pick up wins over the final month. One ball, two strikes. And only Max Scherzer looked you know, 20 and three. And the one two delivery on the way to him and that'll be no foul. Cardinals cutting their magic number to one. With their victory today and a loss by the other two teams chasing them Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Detroit's magic number is one they can wrap it up they're playing in Minnesota they've got a one nothing lead fifth inning. That's for the division championship. Here's the one two delivery. Oh. Couldn't wait long enough on that one. He got him. Well, he tried to. The big sweeper. And he'd like to take this pitch, except there's two strikes, so you're going to go chase it. Yeah, just trying to wait. And the break gets him. Josh stole the catcher. RBI single. Single score to run, two for three in the ball game, and that is in there for a strike. T.J. McFarland, chance to be the winner in this ball game. The starter, Rogers, Ismail Rogers, six runs, eight hits, over four and a third. Pitcher of record for the Jays. A one delivery and a great pitch down and in foul tip for a strike on two. Patton ready on the two strike pitch and a breaking ball in the air to center. Going back. Friday reaching. Oh, not out of his reach. Just tipped it and it'll be a double. He came in a little bit initially, uh, misread it, I think, and then almost able to make up for that with his speed and center, but not quite. And plus, he's playing really shallow here. There's that one step. You could see the, and then he just can't quite catch up. Well, Josh Thal, pretty nice night here. Two singles and a double. He's down to second with only one away. Bottom part of the order has been putting some numbers up here in this seven and eight position. Ryan Goins has had two singles, two for three. Runner at second, one out. Jays now have 11 hits. The Orioles have 10. But the O's with the three home runs. Orioles continuing to lead the majors in home runs as a team. 207 home runs for the Orioles this year. The Blue Jays have 183.
One down. Here's the 0-1 delivery to him. And that ball popped up third base. Flaherty in foul territory has got it. And there are two down. In our Major League Notebook, let's take a look at this state of Major League history. In 1955, at the age of 20, L.K. Line, the youngest player to win a batting title, hit 340. Ty Cobb had been one day older when he claimed the batting title in 1907. And in 1974, changed baseball for pitchers. Dr. Frank Job transplanted that tendon from Tommy John's wrist to elbow, created the all new Tommy John surgery. And that will be it for Patton as the matchups go on. Pilar due up, and the Orioles turn to the bullpen, leading it 7 to 4. From Baltimore, played for the Tigers, 53 to 74, Hall of Fame, 1980, 3,007 hits, 399 home runs, lifetime, 297 batting average, and against the Cardinals in the 68 World Series at 379. Baltimore's own going to the Tigers to play LK Line. Yep, you won't find a uh, nicer guy, both on and off the field. Well, I should have a face on mine, which I had to. So, uh, but terrific guy, still with, you know, vice president with the uh, Tigers. So we certainly wish him well. Jason Hamill on. Orioles needing outs here. And so good to see him healthy. And uh, a bunch of scouts here. And, you know, uh, another one of the storylines will be will Jason Hamill, who will be a free agent, will he be re signed? Will he go elsewhere? Been a tough year because of the uh, fact he hasn't pitched well. He's had some forearm problems, missed over a month. Second time he's worked out of the bullpen for the Orioles this season. And Kevin Pilar is the hitter. He is lined out, grounded out, and struck out. Runner on at second base, two down. Double by Toll, the catcher. He's the base runner. And a 1 0 coming. And the pitch will be outside for a ball. Oh, Hamill falls behind with that runner on at second base and the Oriole lead at three. Yeah, the big uh, difference for him is, you know, health issues. Last year was a knee, this year the forearm, but the home run ball, nine last year and 118 innings, 22 this year. And the 2 0 delivery is taken. It is in there for a strike. Hamill uh, against the Jays this year has taken a loss in three starts. They've hit him hard with the 13 runs on 17 hits and 17 innings. Two ball, one strike delivery. And that ball is going to be popped up. Second or first, second baseman. Jonathan Scope goes back and puts it away. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Seventh inning stretch time. Captain Yards, Orioles up.
seven four. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer here. Jim Dillon Bundy's the name that's kind of gotten lost because he's not played, been not been able to pitch with a surgery. What do you think for next year for him? Well, I would imagine next year, a year, fourteen months, when we have a guy that has these, that precocious. Turned 21 in November. I think people forget he was nine and three, a ball, higher A, double A last year, and then pitched in the big leagues at the end of the year. But with Tommy John, he'll probably be very judicious. He'll probably next year will probably be about getting back to being healthy, and then in the year 2015, he'll be a guy that will probably have a chance to make the ball club. So not until the second half of the season, even if he yeah. can pitch a little. And they're not going to rush him. I mean, yeah. it, obviously, it'd be a kid that. Could pitch in September if he was able to say pitch in uh, July and August, but uh, at the big league level, talking about if you were in the pennant race, and hopefully that'll be the case. Very easy to forget that he obviously, in the beginning of the season, was someone they had counted on at some point to be here and adding to their starting pitching. Well, he certainly has the talent. It's yeah. and a lot of times, yeah. as we all know, it's it's about health issues, and, and you never know coming back what it's going to look like. Uh, it's usually you know, I talked to Oriole trainer head trainer Richie uh, Van Sells and he said but 92 93 percentile from Tommy John labrum surgery maybe a little less down in the 80s. One ball one strike out Chris Davis batting and a swing and a foul tip held on to. For Chris the big sports illustrated cover put up in the great story that was done on him and talking about how he developed. Into this home run hitter with the work that he did. Help from Robinson Cano in the offseason when he went down to play a little winter ball in Cano's hometown. A little one on one discussion. One two delivery on the way, and that one dropped off the table, and Davis is retired. Well, they have a lot of options. Uh, you know, we're talking about John Gibbons, but they want to see if uh, Jeffers can uh, pitch at this level. Just got the guy leading, tied for the RBI lead and the home run leader. Swing at about as good a curveball as you can throw. So, so last night we saw Santos come in throwing little BBs and then per Perez coming back. A left hander, so it looks like uh, this bullpen will be in better shape next year for the Jays than last this this last year. Jeffers has been a reliever over the last four seasons of professional baseball, like most he started. His professional career as a starter. 26 years old. And the pitch will be taken on the outside corner. That will turn Steve Pierce away. Well, there's a term in baseball when a guy's nasty. And this guy's nasty. I mean, movement, velocity. He's made some great pitches. And then the old uh, yellow hammer, the yocker, the curveball <laughs> off the table. 0 oh, 2 delivery, and then he tries to get you to chase him. Yep. One ball, two strike count. One and two, one down with the Orioles 7 10 and 2. The Jays 4 11 and 0. 11 left on by the Jays. Five left on by the Orioles. The Orioles have taken care of business tonight, and they've gotten people on. They've gotten them in. One ball, two strike pitch, and off the fist. This is going to be a tough play if it stays fair. Laurie guns it. Not going to get him. That'll be an infield hit. So Pierce is on with his second hit, two for three, and an intentional pass. On Saturday, Oriole fans will have several chances to create a one of a kind Birdland memory here as part of Fan Appreciation Week. Orioles will have the Red Sox in night game 705. You can earn an on field experience, serve as a PA announcer for an inning, even hand in the official lineup card or throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Your chance comes Saturday night, 888 848 Bird or Orioles.com for tickets. You save when you buy them in advance. It could be Adam Jones. He brought the lineup card out tonight. He did. He must have been one of those selected in fan appreciation week. Yeah, and you know, hitting lessons, bring out the lineup card. I bet he was. Umpires probably had, had him. That's enough. <laughs> you don't think he talked with him? No, him, no, no, no. Not Adam. Not Adam. He doesn't. Very quiet. <laughs> Friday a single, RBI and a ground ball out, one for three. Runner on at first, base hit number 11 for the Orioles. Again, that great pitch down low with some gusto on it. One ball, one strike count. 
And there's his pitching coach Pete Walker and there's his skipper former catcher John Gibbons. Liking what they see and a swing and a miss little tailing action against the left hander one or two. Well that was a great uh, angle right there because uh, Josh Thole put his glove right on the outside corner. The ball started on the right edge of the glove and ran all the way to the other side of the glove. So great late life hard to put the good part of the bat on those type of pitches. One and two. Pierce at first. Lind holding. And a ground ball towards short. Reyes. One going to throw. Won't get it. Pretty good job to avoid the runner right there as he had a tough pivot to make to make that throw. Two down. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Two away, runner at first. Clevenger coming to the plate. He has picked up a base hit, a single, one for three in the ball game, getting the start behind the plate. Buck Showalter talking before the game today about the Red Sox series coming in. Boston still battling for that home field advantage with the best record in the American League. So he said for the sake of the integrity of the game he said while I can get some players in we want to look at against Toronto it's going to be harder to do against the Red Sox. Now you'll see the, the A lineup even though the B lineup has done a nice job yeah. tonight. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. and delivery on the way and the foul ball. But you got Brian Roberts sitting it out. He's hit home runs in two consecutive games. Flaherty uh, comes in for a Machado. He hits one out onto Utah Street. Pierce gets to play. What four at bats all the way since 21st of August? He hits a home run to tie it up. And then, not only uh, did you lose four in a row in Tampa, it's just you were there, Gary. I mean, the, the late arrival, the Almost seven hour ball game, the turnaround, what, 115 or something? Yeah. And then Tampa playing well and doing what you wanted to do, which is win. Machado going down. Yeah. To so. see it with a concussion potential on the collision. I mean, it couldn't have been much worse. <laughs> that trip, those four games, it was very tough. And uh, Manny, fortunately, an injury not as bad as many thought it might be. And here watching the ball game. 0 oh, 2 count, 2 down. And that's fouled off. Orioles have not scored seven runs in a ball game since the 2nd of September. And uh, Norris started that ball game and they got seven against Cleveland in a 7 to 2 win. And there's Mark DeRosa. He got the, uh, not only did he tie the game up, he won it. As Thus, a, doesn't get to start. Yeah, well, <laughs> he wasted two hits last night. <laughs> yeah, one in the eighth and one in the tenth. Leverager goes back for New Lumber. Friday off first base. Jeffress with the 0-2 delivery, and will miss inside with it. I want to welcome all of those watching around the world on AFN Armed Forces Network. Always great to have you with us. Wherever you may be, be safe. And thank you. One, two, the count. It'll stay that way. Crowd tonight 23,698, 23,698. Oh, nice Part of the crowd. fan appreciation yeah. week. Real good crowd. Well, I thought that when Buck Showalter here, Oil Skipper, was talking about, uh, you know, kind of breaks your heart, breaks our fans' heart. The, the fans have been terrific. Somebody was asking me uh, the other day, having dinner Monday night, and they said, well, our fans come back in Baltimore. I said, oh, have they ever? Swung on and missed. Tag will be put on at the plate. And that will retire the side. No runs on one hit, no errors. One left on base. After seven, the Orioles are up seven to four.
also a destination for culinary adventure, from the fresh local seafood to the array of Zagat rated restaurants. You can learn more. Go to SaverSarasota.com. And if you get down there, you'd like to dine outside on a beautiful setting, the John and Mabel Ringling Museum of Art, which is out by the airport, has a wonderful dining area with the water fountains and outdoor dining and some real fine food. And you get to go see one of the great museums of the world. Here is Jose Reyes, and Reyes wallops a foul. Well, there's some bat speed for you. Huh. <laughs> wow. That'd be messing around inside on me. Mm. Jason Hamill on the mound for the Orioles, getting the final out in the seventh inning. Pat in two thirds of an inning with uh, one hit and a strikeout. Started for the Orioles, Bud Norris, three runs, seven hits over four. TJ McFarland, the Orioles pitcher of record right now, an inning plus a run on three hits. Stinson, an inning, one strikeout. Patton, and now Hamill. Reyes will take the breaking ball, and it misses. Fooled him, but it missed. Yeah, he can get out on that front foot and keep the bat from going. I mean, it kind of a, it's, it's a lunge check swing, and he does it well. One ball, two strike count, a walk and a run scored, a single, a pie, and in, foul back. Kawasaki, then Laurie do up. I understand Kyle Drabeck, who had to leave the ball game, was a right ankle bone bruise on that ball that came back and caught him. One two delivery and that'll be fouled away. Well that's good to know. I mean uh, McLeod hit that BB off his. Like his right ankle. Yeah, John Gibbons looking on and would love to get his lead off guy on and Jason Hamill would love to have an easy inning and starts with a table setter. Here's the one two delivery on the way and foul back again. Reyes holding that count at a ball and two strikes. He struck out only 43 times while drawing 31 walks in over 360 at bats. One two pitch to him and he's going to earn a base hit to right field. The leadoff and on here in the eighth inning second hit for Reyes. The video game that puts you in the owner's suite is now available free on iPhone and iPad. Build your stadium, make the decisions to guide your team to the World Series. Download MLB Ballpark Empire free today. Data and usage rates may apply. Kawasaki, double two singles. He's had four hits in the two games. Four for six. And the pitch from Hamill will be taken away for a ball. Jays have been relentless in getting people on base. There's not been a clean inning here for an Orioles pitcher. Well, that curveball that Reyes hit into right field. Butting for a base hit. Uh oh. Flaherty running throw, not going to get him. So an infield hit, Kawasaki on with a bunt single. Well, Gary, you were talking earlier about, uh, you know, how do you. Uh, Improve your your offense or maximize it. That's a perfect example right there. You just can't let this guy bunt. And he comes in, but if you play in another 10 feet. Who cares? He's not going to hit the ball that hard the other way. And you're, you're saying, hey, lay it down. And he did. So. You got to give them credit. Reyes hits a great curve ball. Certainly could have rolled over. And Kawasaki does what. What they give them, which is let them bunt the ball, and now all of a sudden you're one swing away from tying it. Laurie will stand in with nobody out and two on. He will not be bunting. He will be looking for a long ball. 13 hits now for the Jays. They continue to out hit the Orioles 13 to 11. Laurie's got a four for 13 off Hamill. Including a home run. 1 0 delivery to it. One ball, one strike count. 
Picked up the walk in the third inning, stole second, scored on a triple by Ghost. Lowry one and one with Lynn the cleanup batter on deck. Jason Hamill with the one one pitch. Popped it up. Could be trouble. Jonathan Scope and it's the first baseman who makes the catch Pierce. Steve Pierce was back there. Scope had the glove right in front of him and somehow Pierce found it and was able to hang on. Well you got a couple of guys that want this little pop up. And Pierce is going to be oh, and out of the uh, palm of the glove into the bare hand. Nice reflexes. And he can hit home runs. Voila. That's a big out. So runners who made it first and second base for Lynn. He is singled, hit into a double play, struck out and walked. Lynn up with one away, and now the Orioles infield set up for two. Hamill. Lynn does not move the bat on first pitches in this ball game. He has come up. Fully intending to take it no matter what and has done just that. He's five for 16 with two home runs off Hamill. Oh, he's doing his Robinson Cano impression. Yeah. You know, Cano just go through a, a game like that. And, oh, nice little pitch right there. 360 turn, ball right underneath yeah. him and found it. 0 oh, 2. Oh, this is a change up, but look at it run away. I mean, mm. great late movement, and it just drops, and Flunger kind of knocks it down. I don't know what that was, but throw another one. Throw another one, <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> Maybe on to something there. Here's the 0-2 delivery on the way. Goodbye. And he just stood there and took it. So Linda's retired on the strikeout. Hamill gets his first K. Well, this is this is Jason Hamill from 2012. He could throw that pitch just about any time earlier on with a forearm discomfort, and then the DL. It looked like instead of strike one, it was ball one. And get into those hitters count. He always seemed like he was maybe a pitch or two from pitching pretty well. Started out five and oh, seven and two. And record now seven and eight. But boy, oh, that was a right on the black. Two down. Rise to Davis. Davis has had one home run off Hamill. And a two for seven overall. So again, this is where Toronto has struggled this month of September, trying to get people home, and they're They've certainly struggled in this game. The 11 they've left on base, two more here. And again, it was an inning where they got the first two on. Will they leave them? That's down the line. That is a foul ball. Yeah, nice pitch. Almost a bad result for Jason Hamill. And Raji Davis uh, thinking, okay, that's probably going to be a triple. Kawasaki racing around the bases all the way from uh, first base. But he was an intent on scoring, and then Davis with great speed would have really doesn't matter double or triple with two outs, but Reyes back the lead runner. And a two strike count. Hamill to Raja Davis. Check swing. Tagged him. Did he go? No. See, you're seeing quality stuff from Jason Hamill. I mean, that's a good curveball. Pretty much where you want to throw it under the zone because of the of the count. 0 and 2. Now 1 and 2. Don't want to hang it. Buried it. Trust your catcher. We're in the eighth inning. Orioles up by three, and Hamill trying to keep it that way. One two delivery did he go. Yes he did. Home plate umpire gets him. This gets the only makes the call himself not asking for help. And Hamill gets a strikeout. And for the third inning in this ball game. Toronto gets the first two runners on in an inning and leaves them there.
candidates tonight. Jonathan Scope, first major league hit, first major league home run. Steve Pierce, who's uh, delivered uh, in this ball game the long ball as well. And Ryan Flaherty. Flaherty has been up. He's hit a home run. He scored a couple of runs in the ball game for the Orioles. Text in your vote A, B, or C. 3 1 8 2 6. So with the Orioles up 7 to 4, Ricky Romero out of the bullpen. So again, I mean, this is one of the great mysteries of baseball. I mean, one of the the best lefties until last year, uh, over the last three, four years. And then all of a sudden, he couldn't command his stuff. This year, those were only three games. Spent most of it down at AAA Buffalo, 5 and 8, 5.78 ERA. A big article in the uh, Toronto paper. Well, why aren't these guys starting? And John Gibbons saying, well, we've got other guys we want to look at. And. Romero still young still talented but I don't know if it's a mental thing or whatever but he used to be able to especially against the Orioles I mean it just throw the glove out there and he was going to be into the seventh eighth ninth innings. So he'll work out of the bullpen here Jonathan Scope gets a great hand. What a night for his major league debut. And he'll take the pitch down low. He delivered the home run first of his career came in the sixth inning. Wasn't much question oh, about that one, was there? Way back. Off Dre back. And the pitch is taken inside. And the 2 0 count. Yeah, Ricky Romero could sink it. He had a change up. He'd throw in any count. Nice little breaking ball. 15 game winner. He pitched well. They'd play well. And it's taken. Count goes to 3 0 from Romero. 13 and 9, 14 and 9, 15 and 11. And then last year, 9 and 14. ERA up almost three runs higher than the year before. His lifetime mark against the Orioles for Romero's 8 and 3. He's had 14 starts against the Orioles with a 3 4 9 ERA. Three ball, one strike count. Scope. He'll take it. He draws a walk. Just get all these firsts out of the way. <laughs> first single, first hit, first double play, first home run, first walk, all in one game. Leadoff man on eighth inning. For every Orioles walk this season, care first. Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes fifty dollars, supporting Wyatt Central Maryland's fit and fun program. Four hundred six walks, twenty thousand three hundred dollars. Care first, Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Ryan Flaherty and a strike. Flaherty, the home run in his first at bat, third inning. Two RBI shot his ninth of the year. Walk and a run scored in the fifth. Walk and stranded in the sixth. Left handers delivery on the 0 1 is going to be outside 1 1. Yeah, the amazing thing, you look at Romero, I mean, a typical year would be 200 innings, 210, 225, 80, 82 walks, a lot of strikeouts, 100, 174, 188. 178. Then last year, 181 innings, 105 walks. Completely lost control of the baseball. 1 1 delivery to Flaherty. Flaherty's going to lose control of the baseball. Way back left field. Has he done it again? He did it. Goodbye, home run. Ryan Flaherty, a two homer ball game. Four RBIs for him. And the Orioles have a 9 4 lead. To the opposite field. Numbers nine and ten on the year for Ryan Flaherty. Well, Camden Yards hitter friendly. Especially when you uh, hit it like this. Let's the ball travel and then this back spins it to about 380 feet to, to the power alley. Well, we said Ryan Flaherty wishes the Orioles played 162 games against Toronto. He's had two, two homer ball games, both this year, both against Toronto. And the pitch is taken inside by Nate McLeod. So Flaherty this season has five home runs 
and nine RBIs against Toronto and hitting over 300. Two ball, one strike count, McLeod. Romero's pitch will be fouled right straight back. Double picked up by McLeod in the third inning, one for three and a walk in the ball game. Yeah, he's trying to. Uh, <laughs> little note today, Chris Davis and Adam Jones uh, with what Davis with 16 home runs the last two years and Adam with 14 have hit at least seven home runs against Toronto in both the last two years. The last two guys to do that, Garrick and Ruth. That ball put up in the air, just missed. He was a little out in front. Raja Davis is there to put it away first out of the eighth inning. So we're going to have to have room for maybe a third guy. We play Toronto anymore. Well, one more game. I mean, if you're Buck Showalter, well, you got Burley, so maybe Flaherty won't play. But you know, Job certainly could be. Job could be playing tomorrow night. Nice little matchup. Rest your guys till the Red Sox come in. Nine runs on 12 hits for the Orioles. J.J. Hardy and Romero gets it in there for a strike. Hardy a single, a run scored. He's gone one for four in the ball game. Hardy's two for 21 off Romero. 0-1 pitches in the dirt. 1-1. So for Romero and in an auspicious appearance here against the Orioles. 1 1 delivery, and that's going to miss up high. Romero has given up uh, only a uh, couple of home runs this year, and but only seven innings worked. Two ball, one strike delivery, and that's going to be away. And again, three and one. Well, I was reading in spring training, they're trying to trade, change the stride and this and all that. And you know, I'm sure it's warranted because when you walk 105 and 181 innings, but. Usually, when you have a guy this town, let him figure it out himself. He looks down at Triple A. It'll be a tough play. Lowry charging, barehanded throw. Nice play, didn't get him. Good effort. Pulled him off the bag, though. Lynn, I think Lynn actually was trying to help get the out by coming off the bag quickly. He came off too quickly. And I'm not really sure that throw drew him off the bag. No, I had seen pretty accurate from here, and Fred Lowry makes a great job. To, I mean, he's playing deep. J.J. Yeah, Hardy has to go a long way, and, and I guess that foot just slides off a little bit. Certainly could have done a better job of receiving the throw. So Hardy will be credited with a base hit. You know, he's got a two-hit ball game, and Nick Markakis standing in. And Nick will take it inside. Nick has had an RBI single. He's one for four. In the game. Each team 13 hits. And Romero will miss away with him. So Romero, a 2 0 count, struggling with the strike zone as he's had per chance to do, and it's 20 pitches thrown here in the inning. 2-0 delivery. Mark Pegas will take it outside. And it's 3-0. Yeah, the amazing number for Ricky Romero, and again, it's not a lot of innings. The lefties came in 7 for 11. That's 636. I mean, this is a guy that used to eat up righties and lefties. Nick with a 3-0. Taking all the way. And four of them out of the strike zone. So the Orioles have runners on at first and second here in the eighth inning with two runs in on Flaherty's homer. And Valencia is going to come on to hit for Davis. Of course, it certainly doesn't help. Rick Romero hasn't pitched in 15 days. So I, and that looks like it. Chad Jenkins in the bullpen. Valencia 
0 for 8 off Romero. Pinch hitting opportunity. And we'll take the pitch inside for a ball. Yeah, Buck Showwater gets him in. A little tune up for Mark Burley tomorrow night. The lefty. Flaherty hoping the team can bat around so he can get another at bat. <laughs> Why not? Two on. Only one away. Valencia, the 1 0 delivery to him, and that's there for a strike. For Valencia in the pitch hitting role, pinch hitting one for seven. What a job he's done in the DH role, though. Look at that. Four for 21. It's an extraordinary number of chances for the Jays. Ground ball down to third base. Laurie will step and throw and record the double play. So the Orioles will get a couple of runs doing it on two hits. One base runner left on. Flaherty getting his second homer. Orioles up 9-4. Gary Thorne and Jim Power on this early fall evening and a beautiful one for baseball and for the Orioles. Finally, the bats coming alive here in September. Ryan Flaherty, the two home runs and four runs batted in. Steve Pierce has had a home run, his fourth of the season. Jonathan Scopes made a great entry to the majors, scoring three times, hitting his first home run, getting his first hit, first walk, and as Played uh, well at second with just routine plays to be made, but he made him. So now the ninth inning, the Orioles three outs away from ending their six game losing streak. Anthony Ghost will lead it off. He'll pop it up. Right center. Nick Marcakis will make the catch. Ghost retired. Let's update you in the voting for the AT&T player of the game, Jonathan Scope. No surprise there. Text in your vote. Still have time. Maybe your C. 31826. Results on the O's Extra Post Game Show. Yeah, Jason Hamill's done a nice job. I mean, the game really kind of turned around when uh, Josh Stinson came in and a couple of guys on. Game very close. And uh, was able to get out of harm's way with the bases loaded. And Actually, he loaded him up and then got the uh, double play ball and the strikeout. But, and then uh, Jason Hamill, kind of like the old days, you bring in your reliever and he finishes the game. Mm -hmm. McFarland, a chance for his third win. He'll go three and one. Ismail Rogers, the starter, will take the loss. He'll be five and nine. Jason Hamill, try and finish it up here with a good performance. Got the out he needed in the seventh to start it. One ball, one strike out. Josh Toll at the plate, loops at the center. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Four what hits. A, what Four. A game. Three singles and a double in the ball game. Well, the 
catcher a big night for Toronto and there's another hit 14 in the game. Again the Jays are out hitting the Orioles 14 13. Brian Goins a couple of singles. He has struck out popped out. One away. Goins will take it for a strike. Third time Toll has had a three hit ball game in his career. A four hit ball game rather. Adding to it here tonight. There he is on it. First base. Yeah kind of hearing faintly what 2009. 0 1 delivery on the way, and that's for a strike. Tampa Bay leading the Yankees. The Yankees lose, they're officially eliminated. That'll be fouled off. And an 0-2 count. Tampa Bay, after that disaster in August, has really turned it around, and they continue to win 8-3 in the ninth tonight. Well, what they did that the Orioles never could do was have that really special month, 21 and 5 in, in July. Yep. And I mean that really got them back on track, and yeah, they did struggle. They kind of did what the Orioles have done this month, which is struggle for runs in August. I mean, and then all of a sudden got a little bit more back in sync. One ball two strike out. Goins with one away. And Jason Hamill trying to put it away. Infield double play up. And a swing and a miss. Two down. We gotta like that curveball. That's last year's hook. Straight down. Perfect count. Get ahead. Bury the breaking ball. Trust your catcher. Levenger's done a nice job of blocking the ball. Look at him to get down. No one-handed grabs. Two down. Kevin Pilar up. 0 for four in the ball game. Runner at first. And it will go to second. Ball will be hit to left. And with a runner going, Toll will come to third base. He'll be waved home. He'll score easily. And it will be a double. So Pilar gets a double and an RBI. And that'll make it a 9 5 ball game. Well, he finally gets one he can center. I mean, he did hit one hard earlier on in the game, lined out a couple of guys on in the fifth. But watch him get on this high fastball and just hit a BB. And Ryan Flaherty. Nice little athletic uh, reach for it, but boy, he hit it hard. Pilar with the RBI, 11 on the year. Still two away. Five runs on 15 hits for Toronto. Reyes puts it in the air. Should be the ball game. Friday coming over to put it away, and that's it. Here in the ninth inning. A run on a couple of hits, no errors, one left on base, and the Orioles end their six-game losing streak as they come away with a 9-5 victory.